T.O. was the dominant storyline. Turnovers, five for Dallas and a win for Philly. That's the kind of T.O. we're talking about. Northern Illinois, Miami of Ohio coming up next. We'll see you. Welcome to ESPN's presentation of Sunday Showdown, presented by Altel Wireless, bringing you the most dynamic sporting events each week. Welcome everyone to Oxford, Ohio, where this week the Northern Illinois Huskies come calling. It's alumni weekend, homecoming weekend, when alumni come back and offer words of encouragement. And no team is more ready for the spotlight than the football crew as they go into battle. Welcome everyone to Jaeger Stadium, Oxford, Ohio. Area code 513. It's an interdivisional battle in the Mid-American Conference. Northern Illinois out of the Western Division and Miami University of the Red Hawks out of the East. Hello everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacey Dales joining us in just a few. This is the 12th meeting all time between these two schools. But the big story coming into this game, Garrett Wolf, the star running back for Northern Illinois, trying to become the first player ever from this conference to win the Heisman Trophy. We saw him earlier against Ohio State. He can play with the big fellas. Well, and if you talk Heisman Trophy candidates right now, I think the top two in the country, you got Troy Smith from Ohio State, and you have Garrett Wolf. And Garrett Wolf's on pace to break the single season record that Barry Sanders set back in 1988. We saw him in the opener against Ohio State. What did he do against one of the top defenses in the country, the number one ranked Buckeyes? 171 yards on the ground. He was over 100 yards catching the ball out of the backfield. You say, hey, maybe he can't get it done against top competition. Against Big Ten opponents, he's averaging 188 yards. That includes the Michigan Wolverines. This guy's for real. Folks, maybe one of the best players you haven't seen yet. Keep an eye on him tonight. On the other side of the field, Miami, Ohio, winless in five contests. But they feel they're on the verge of a breakout tonight, and Ryan Robinson, a key figure for them. Well, Ryan Robinson burst on the scene three years ago with Ben Roethlisberger. He really shown as a wide receiver and as a punt returner. They're going to have to get the ball in his hands. They do a lot of things to get him involved as a wide receiver. He's only 143 yards away from breaking the all-time record. Career-wise, as a punt returner, he's a dynamic player. They've got to get him involved. Hey, more than one player, folks, rewriting the record books here on the field tonight in Oxford, Ohio. Miami, Ohio, still with hopes of getting at least a share of the Eastern Division title, ready to take the field behind their second-year head coach, Shane Montgomery. They feel that they are ready for some big things to happen for them tonight. But one of the keys for them will be keeping an eye on the dynamic Mr. Wolf, Garrett Wolf, ready to roll tonight. And if they don't watch him, Miami could get their feelings hurt. The Northern Illinois Huskies are led by a wolf with a ravenous, insatiable appetite for yards. Garrett Wolf, the most prolific running back in college football. Diminutive, dynamic, and dependable. Explodes up the middle of the 40, Wolf 50. Cuts back against the grade. He cuts back again against the grade. Five and a touchdown. Are this, you kidding me? A... Tonight, Wolf is set to blow the house down at Miami of Ohio. It's the Mac in prime time next. Get full from Taco Bell's value menu. I'm full! Introducing Taco Bell's half-pound value menu lineup. Now fill up on any of three hefty half-pound burritos to keep your stomach and your wallet full. Think outside the bun. Out of the final seconds. Behind the praise and encouragement, I hear the chorus of doubt. You might think doubt distracts me, but my faith is strong, and I will make you believe. NBA Live 2007. Ready for everyone. EA Sports is in the game. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Introducing the. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. And welcome everyone back to Yeager Stadium. 
Oxford, Ohio, Northern Illinois taking on Miami. And right now we're going to go downstairs to Stacey Dales. Hey, Mark, you guys talk about Garrett Wolf. You know, there are a lot of critics out there that say maybe Garrett Wolf shouldn't win the Heisman simply because he plays in the Mid-America Conference. I asked Wolf about the disrespect that he's receiving, and he said he doesn't care about all that. He just wants to win games. But he also said that if it is so easy to say rush for 353 yards like he did last week, why aren't no disrespect here more backs around mid-major conferences doing it? He also said, you know, there's a lot of credit given to some of the bigger conferences and players out there that maybe have a more storied tradition or history. And we can't forget the fact, and again, no disrespect here, that he is playing behind a MAC O line. Imagine the possibilities if he was playing, say, behind an SEC or Big 12 line. Best thing, Mark, about Garrett, though, he gives all the love to those guys. Back up to you. Yeah, he's got some pretty uh, grateful offensive linemen up front. And here's a look at the weather this evening. A very uh, unseasonable and warm 66 degrees, uh, minimal wind. Uh, Forecast clear for tonight and ready for a nice football game between these two rivals in the Mid-American Conference. Joe Novak, the head coach of Northern Illinois in his 11th season on the sidelines. He really turned this program around several years ago and now has a good thing in DeKalb. His counterpart on the other side of the field is Shane Montgomery in his second season as the head coach at Miami, Ohio. Record of 7-9 and nine, took over from Terry Hepner, who's now at Indiana and back to coaching. Uh, Terry Hefner uh, recovering recently from brain surgery. We're glad that he's back. And uh, Miami, Ohio is set to kick off tonight. They won the toss, deferring to the second half. Northern Illinois set to receive. Back deep, it's Marcus Perez. Kick comes down at the 12. And this is Perez. Got a little bit of an alley on the right side of the field. Marcus Perez pushed out of bounds at the 43 yard line. Here's a look at the impact players for Northern Illinois. Running back Garrett Wolf, we talked about him. No player has run for over 1,000 yards faster than him. Bill Horvath has been red hot of late, completing 77% of his passes during the last two games. He led the nation last season in completion percentage at over 70%. First down and 10 for the Huskies from the 43-yard line. They're going to throw it on first down. Horvath. And it's incomplete. The ball hit the turf intended for Garrett Wolf. Let's take a look at the offensive unit for Northern Illinois. Talked about Garrett Wolf in the backfield. Britt Davis and Marcus Perez, some dangerous receivers. The offensive line has seen a lot of different bodies come into and out of the starting lineup. They have had two different freshmen start, but right now they're starting to play as well as they have all season long. And Doug Free is the guy to watch, number 62, an NFL prospect. Second down and 10. They hand it off to Garrett Wolf, who, much like last week, stuck for a loss against Ball State on their first play of the game. Caniglio making the stop up front for Miami. It'll be third down and long as we take a look at the Red Hawk defense. This is a group that has to play well today, and they have to improve their rush defense. All of those guys that are highlighted there from the state of Ohio. A loss of three on the last play. Third down from the 40 yard line. Opening series of the ball game for Northern Illinois. They got off to a slow start last week against Ball State. Horvath to pass and has his man for the first down all the way to the 38 yard line. Brandon Davis, who had only four catches going into the game last week, had a career week and continues on a positive trend, picking up 21 here. Well, and you talk about how tough Garrett Wolf is to stop. Yeah, by far the top running back in the country statistically and you throw in Horvath who's a very accurate passer averaged over 200 yards passing a year ago and he completed over 71 percent of his ball this team is for all the talk of Garrett Wolf running is very balanced here's Horvath buying time and sacked back at the 47 yard line Jared Gaines making the sack off the corner. And that's the ninth sack of the season for Miami, Ohio. It'll be second down and long coming up. Oh, Gaines is going to come off the right side. And you're right, Jones. He corner blitz and just 
a matter of Doug Free on the left side, Fanny. That's one of the top offensive linemen in the country, and he gets beat by a cornerback. Big loss on the play. Pushes the ball, David, all the way back to the 48. Second down coming up. They run the draw play. This is Wolf, and he stopped up for a loss on the play back at the 46-yard line. Clayton Mullins making the stop. Characterized as one of those high motor guys, the second leading tackler on that defensive unit for Miami, Ohio. Well, believe me, the rest of the way, defensive coordinators, the schedule for Northern Illinois, they're going to be eight and nine men up on the line of scrimmage. And Northern Illinois likes to use two tight ends. And that gives teams the ability to get both safeties involved. This front seven for Miami is really going to be the key to this football game. And there's a look at Brandon Davis, one of those two tight ends. We would be remiss if we didn't mention that Jake Nordine, their starting tight end, is out for the rest of the season with a leg injury. Horvath overthrows his intended target and is picked off by Gaines. Gaines on the move and brought down on the other side of midfield at the 49-yard line. Just the third interception of the season thrown by Horvath. Well, this is the same seam route that Horvath hit early on this first possession, and he has his man. It looked like he was going up top again to Davis, and that's just a poor ball. An overthrow, a nice break on the football, and Miami comes up with a big turnover early. First down and 10 for Miami. On Northern Illinois side of midfield at the 48, Mike Pokel, the starting quarterback this week. Pokel hands it off to Brandon Murphy. Murphy on the go, and Murphy brought down at the 35-yard line. Got a first down for the Red Hawks. Take a look at the offensive unit and the impact players first. Pokel coming off of a situation where he couldn't play last week because of severe headaches, but put up some good numbers so far this season, completing 62% of his passes. And Ryan Robinson, as we mentioned in our opening at the show, rewriting the record book here at Miami. A dangerous wideout and punt returner. Here's Pokel to pass. Has Robinson complete. And another first down inside the 25 at the 24-yard line. So off the turnover, Red Hawks starting to move the ball a little bit here. Pickup of 11, David. Well, and, and they like to get the ball to Robinson, obviously. And they do a lot of things to keep him clean. They line him up in the slot. They like to move him around with motion. Here's a look at the defense. Actually, the offense first for Miami. And... That offensive line, folks, ranked 119 out of 119 schools in Division I in allowing sacks. They have to keep Pokel safe tonight. This time, Brandon Murphy runs the ball down to the 20-yard line. And about two or three on the play as we look at the Husky defensive unit. And a defensive unit still looking for its first interception of the season. That's right, after five games, they don't have any, but therein lies the strength of the defense, the linebackers, Blaylock, McCarthy, and Corey Hansen. Second down coming up for the Red Hawks. Knows the ball in the 22. Kokel on the quarterback draw. He's a dangerous runner, and Kokel is brought down at the 13, but there's a flag down on the field in the vicinity, back at the 16-yard line, and this one might come back on a hold. Yeah, and this hold might go against his tailback, Brandon Murphy. It would be so auspicious a beginning for Miami if they got some points on the board early because this is a team that has had trouble scoring. Holding number 24 on the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay, second down. Talked about the dearth of points. Here's a look at the play first. Yeah, keep an eye on number 24 right here. And. You know, those are mistakes you can't afford to make. You know, real key, we're going to talk about the things that Miami has to do defensively tonight, but also on offense, you got to keep the ball away from Garrett Wolf. Pushes it back to the 26. Pokel out of the shotgun. And this pass is incomplete at the 25-yard line intended for Brandon Murphy. It'll be second down coming up. Talked about the fact that they've had problems scoring in fact, so far this season, they've only led for 41 seconds. They've trailed for almost 300 minutes. That really underscores the point. And Shane Montgomery, the head coach, he said you know, this week, 
you look at our record and you think we're a bad team we're just an average team that isn't making plays and I would argue if you're an average team not making plays you're a bad team. Got to connect the dots on that one. Big hand off to Murphy this pass complete to Robinson and Robinson swarmed immediately at the 20 yard line. Tim McCarthy leading the way he picked up six on the play. And that holding call awfully tough the holding call on Brandon Murphy took away the rhythm on that drive. Nice play by Kokel. He looked sharp early. Made a nice play there on third down to give his team a reasonable shot at the field goal. Trevor Cook now in to attempt the field goal for Miami. He won the job last week. He's been a change of place kickers for the Red Hawks. Last week made a 49 yarder in their loss against Cincinnati. Bangs this one off the upright and goes in from 37 yards out. It doesn't have to be a Picasso. That'll count. When we come back, Garrett Wolf getting back to work. You can call him the IRS, folks, because he's been taxing defenses all season long. They've got the ball when we return. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, Michigan, Penn State, or Arizona State, USC. This Saturday at 8, college football lives here. Welcome back, everyone, to Sunday Showdown, presented by Altel Wireless. Miami leading Northern Illinois 3 to nothing in this interdivisional battle in the Mid-American Conference. And the story coming into tonight, Garrett Wolf, so far off to a slow start. A couple of rushes for a total of minus four yards. As the Huskies get set to receive this kickoff, Marcus Perez back deep for the Huskies. And once again, they kick it up high to Perez at the 19. Perez with a couple of sweet moves all the way out to the 36 yard line. Here's that uh, Red Hawk defense doing a nice job on that first possession. Yeah, really the key tonight. They're going to need penetration. They're going to have to have a great night tackling. And of course, you've got to come up with some turnovers. This Northern Illinois offense is so potent, Jonesy, because it has the combination of Garrett Wolf and his prolific statistics. And then you got Phil Horvath, a guy who's a very accomplished quarterback, throwing the football. See what they do on this series. First down and 10. It's Wolf looking for a seam, not finding one. Maybe got a yard on the play. Dante Wright making the stop, the starting strong side linebacker. Garrett Wolf last week had three touchdown runs of 48, 51, and 53 yards. And that was Tavor Johnson, the defensive coordinator you saw for Miami. Maybe got less sleep than any defensive coordinator this week, right? <laughs> well, Tavor's done a nice job early in terms of getting men up on the line of scrimmage and not giving Garrett Wolf any room beyond the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 coming up for the Huskies. Horvath on the bootleg complete and a nice hit on the play by Frank Rewo but a nice catch by Matt Simon did well to hang on and pick up eight yards on the play. Now Wewo is an impressive looking cornerback and he's got the type of size that NFL scouts a salivate over 6 3 196 and that's called leading a receiver into a hard spot as a quarterback you don't want to sit one of your receivers down into a into a cornerback that's just waiting there. I'm sure you've never done that. Try not to. <laughs> they don't get too friendly in the huddle after those plays. Third down and two. Garrett Wolf on the little zone play and I'm not sure that he made the first down stopped at the 45. Once again, Dante Wright leading the charge for the Red Hawks. And fourth down coming up for Northern Illinois. Well, Miami early in this football game is winning the battle along the line of scrimmage. And you watch this defensive unit work together. You've got to be gap sound, meaning each defender has to respect the gap responsibilities that they have. But Garrett Wolf is way too mature, way too experienced. If you're out of a gap, he's going to find it. 
And keep an eye on number two, Ryan Robinson, the active NCAA leader in punt return yardage and on the verge of setting the record for touchdowns off punt returns as well. Andy Dittbenner is standing on his own 32-yard line for the Huskies. And the play clock runs out. Delay the game on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. It's going to be interesting to see what Coach Novak does in the kicking game here because he was telling us earlier this week in our conference call that they've been inconsistent in their directional kicking game. So how do they handle Ryan Robinson? Well, here? I think you get directionally correct. <laughs> and you start <laughs> kicking the ball away from him. Now, it'll force a couple bad punts, and you're going to have shorter net yardage. But you don't risk what happened last week when Robinson took one back 80 yards against Cincinnati. And he might get a shot here. And that's a great directional kick. They are directionally correct, as you said, partner. This one out of bounds at the 12-yard line, a 48-yard punt. Nothing on the return. The Red Hawks with the ball when we come back. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Altel Wireless. Come and get your love. And in part by Open, how American Express serves small business. That's either John Blatarski reincarnate or the latest challenger for Kobayashi in the hot dog eating contest. Skyline Chili, though, one of the great traditions in this area. <laughs> From Cincinnati on down here to Oxford, Ohio. Stomach pump a, not included, of course. He's the leader of the away team from <laughs> Faber College. <laughs> well, like Faber College, this too homecoming weekend here at Oxford, Ohio, and Miami leading three to nothing with 6:34 to go in the first period. Miami winless on the season, but looked pretty impressive after the turnover, able to convert it into a field goal. First down and ten from their own 12 after the 48-yard punt. Kokel under the center this time. A quick three-step drop and incomplete intended for Dustin Woods. It'll be second and ten coming up. Well, and that's just pitch and catch right there. Coco came out sharp on the first possession. He's got to make those throws to have success tonight. And, you know, Mark, coming off that game that he missed a week ago, this offensive line has given up more sacks than any team in the country, 27, and he has taken some shots over the course of the early season for Miami. That says a lot with a quarterback, too, that has a very good ability to scramble and make plays on his own. Second and ten coming up. This time out of the shotgun. And off to Murphy. Murphy with a nice gain between the tackles, making it out near the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and about two coming up. Brad Benson making the stop on the play. Murphy out of Strongsville, Ohio. At 59 yards on 13 carries in the loss to Cincinnati last week. Well, this Miami offense going back four or five years has received a lot of attention across the country. Ben Roethlisberger and Josh Betts took over the last two seasons through 50 touchdown passes. Josh Betts did. But this team has always been able to mix in the run. Kokel doing just that, running into the boundary. Not enough room there. Good pursuit angles by the defense to push him out of bounds at the 20. Ken West making the play. And it'll be fourth down coming up. A designed run that time for Kokel, who, as I mentioned, can make some plays with his legs. And those third and short situations are going to be critical tonight. You know, they've Miami's done a nice job of bottling up Garrett Wolf early, but you do not want to give him a lot of opportunities, a lot of possessions of the football. Miami's got to do their best to move the chains and keep their defense off the field. Jake Richardson punting. Greg Turner standing at his own 35. He'll get a chance to return this punt. There's already a flag down on the play, and Turner is brought down at the 39, but the flag was thrown Closer back to the line of scrimmage at the 38-yard line. A 48-yard punt, seven on the return. We'll have to wait and see what this flag is about. Sideline warning on Miami. That's their first sideline warning. There's your call. Well, Northern Illinois with the ball now. Uh, this game important for them. You ask them what's at stake. They say this is very important in the big picture and that this is the second game of a three-game road swing for them. 
And they are looking to make some hay in the division in the Mid-American Conference. We're going to take a short break. Come right back after this. With unmatched technology and innovation years ahead of its time, we've pushed the boundaries of high definition and tested the limits of reality. The new Pure Vision Plasma Display, only from Pioneer. So Mike Ditka called you a bedwetting mama's boy. It was great radio. That's all. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPN. It's the greatest rivalry in UFC history. Tito Ortiz and Ken Shamrock. These guys truly hate each other. But their last fight ended in controversy. I think the fans didn't get what they paid for last time. Shamrock in disbelief. So now I'm going to give it to them for free on Spike TV. UFC, the final chapter. Tito Ortiz versus Ken Shamrock 3. Live and free. Tuesday, October 10th at 8, 7 central on Spike TV. Hey, over here. Why don't you switch to our network? We're just like them. Are you reliable? Excellent question. How about for email or downloading music? Why not? Only one wireless network is America's most reliable for calls, downloads, and emails. That is a problem, and we are working on it. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. Welcome back, everyone, to Oxford, Ohio. Miami leading Northern Illinois by a field goal here in the first quarter. Garrett Wolf, the Heisman Trophy candidate, Right now, four rushes for a total of minus three yards. First down and ten for the Huskies from their own 43. It's Wolf. Cuts it back. And Garrett Wolf out to the 43. He got about six on the play. Dante Wright making the stop on the play. And right now, back to Reese Davis for this update. All right, Mark, Sports Center 30 at 30. Dallas and Philadelphia this afternoon. Dallas was driving for a tying score. Drew Bledsoe threw it right to Lito Shepard, who housed it from his own end zone. Eagles win it 38-24. Teo had three catches and surprisingly was displeased with the outcome. The New York Daily News reports that Joe Torre is likely to be fired. Much more on this story after the game on Sports Center and on ESPN News all the time. Okay, Reese. That pass incomplete. Good pressure by Craig Mester. It's intended for Britt Davis, one of their leading receivers. So after all the T.O. hype, Philadelphia wins. <laughs> I got two questions. When is T.O. not frustrated? And number two, how can you fire Joe Torrey? I mean, how? Uh, yeah, good luck to the next guy. Yeah. yeah, what have you done for me lately? I guess you don't get much for your 200 million payroll, right? Got to keep the receipt. Third down and five coming up. Horvath swallowed up back at the 44. That appeared to be good coverage in the secondary, David, as Coniglio making the sack on the play, and it's another three and out for Northern Illinois offensively. Well, this should be a quarterback's dream tonight. You're going to get singled out outside most of the night. On this particular play, there's help from safeties in a third and long situation. But Phil Horvath is going to have a lot of opportunities down the field with all the men defensively that Miami's dedicating to the line of scrimmage. Did Benner into punt his second of the night. Ryan Robinson, the active all-time leader in punt return yardage, standing on his own 15 for Miami. And the last one went for 48 yards and didn't have a chance to return. That almost hit a Miami player. It's be whistled and marked out of bounds at the 21 but whose ball is it it's going to be northern illinois football it hit the leg of wendell brunson on the play for miami 
And the official was right there. Here's the look. Well, I think this clearly hit him on the way down. Looked like it caught his left foot. Wendell Brunson. And the return team, they have signals that Ryan Robinson has a code word that he's calling out, and that clearly hit his left foot. And Greg Turner was right there, number 17, to collect the loose ball for Northern Illinois. And right now, you talk about room service, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. And Ryan Robinson is verbally telling people to get away from the football. But when you're on the return team, you can't always pick up the football. And Greg Turner, a heads-up play to make the recovery for Northern Illinois. First and 10 Huskies. Davis in motion. That's Brandon Davis. The give is to Wolf. Cutting it back, which he does so well. Garrett Wolf down to the 16 yard line. Brought down by Joey Carr. You know, Garrett Wolf said he wanted to grade out at 95% for every game this year. He graded out at 98% for the first four games this season. Was disappointed last week because he only graded out 96. Well, how do you grade him at 96 when he runs for 353 <laughs> yards? He had two touchdown runs that were called back, one of 70 yards and the other 45. It was the fumble. That's the 4% right there. <laughs> Second down and five. Wolf again. Wolf bursting through the seam. Garrett Wolf, touchdown. Garrett Wolf with a burst across the turf with his 12th rushing touchdown this season, the 46th of his career. And they're able to capitalize on the punting gaffe by Miami. The Huskies take the lead. Hendick with the extra point knocks it through. And Northern Illinois leads 7 to 3. A costly miscue in the punting game by Miami. And Joe Novak's team has taken the lead. Just a great block up front by Eddie Adamski, the center for Northern Illinois. Watch him get out and get into the secondary and just clear the way on the perimeter for Garrett Wolf. I mean, that's just a nice job athletically by a center and the cutting ability of Garrett Wolf. And people talk about his vision. They talk about his size getting hidden behind those big offensive linemen. I think he is going to be a longtime NFL player, Mark Jones, and I think part of it is because he's a complete back. He's not only great pack in the mail, but he's a heck of a blocker, and he's also a threat catching the ball coming out of the, the backfield. It's interesting you speak to him, and he was telling us earlier this season when we saw them play against Ohio State that uh, likes to model his game after Warwick Dunn. Kind of the same type of slight build, the uh, same chassis and size. Yeah, and when you're mentioning Warwick Dunn, you're putting him in tall company. Yes. And he's got a ways <laughs> to go to be that type of player. And, but there have been a lot of players at the NFL level that have gotten it done at that size. You talk about guys like you know, Eric Metcalf, of course, Barry Sanders, Joe Morris. Right. Dave Meggett, another one. Played for years with the Giants and the Pats. On the return of fumble in the end zone, this is Woods. And he doesn't have to bring that out. He made the night, he made the right move there. It's that's a touchback. That's Miami's ball at the 20. He was lucky to pounce on it. Well, ESPN Full Circle, folks, presents a huge SEC showdown. Get the game from every angle. ESPN brings you the traditional telecast as Florida hooks up with a big one against Ty Powered Auburn. ESPN 2 offers commentary on the fly from Colin Howard and the game day crew, and ESPN U puts you in the director's chair with multiple camera choices on screen. ESPN Full Circle Florida versus Auburn delivered by AT&T Saturday at 7.45 Eastern Time. College football lives here. First down and 20 for Miami. Little draw play to Murphy, and Murphy got about six. Boy, they really could have used Murphy partner in the first two games of the season when they got off to a slow start they were in the ball games but they nonetheless dropped both well Murphy was a thousand yard back a year ago and what's really characterized the Miami Ohio offense under Ben Roethlisberger and 
Josh Betts has been the ability to throw the ball down the football field. They're not a dink and dunk. They don't like to go short with the football, but then you got to have a running game, and you also have to run screens to your tailback. Ryan Robinson lines up in the slot. They run the reverse this time. It's to Woods, and Woods using some of his elusiveness down to the 29-yard line. Hansbro, one of the two twins in the secondary, making the stop for the Huskies. Now, Dustin Woods is a lot like Ryan Robinson, a younger version, probably the fastest member of this receiving core. And like Ryan Robinson, they like to get Woods touches if they can. A nice job by Northern Illinois a rallying to the football and turning that play back inside. Third and short coming up. Murphy has the first down and then some, but there's a flag thrown in the area. We'll see if it stands or not. There's a flag back at the 28-yard line. Brandon Murphy shows you that he can run outside or inside, but this one will come back. It's a hold against Miami. Talk about that offensive line and some of the troubles they've been having. Holding. Number 68 on the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. Dave DeFranco, the perpetrator on that penalty. 27 seconds to go here in the first period. And Miami has been hurt by injuries. They haven't started the same five consecutively in any game this year. And they're two top offensive linemen. They've lost for long stretches. Out of the shotgun. Focal. Underneath. Threw it behind Murphy, incomplete. That one a little bit high. And it'll be fourth down now coming up. Coco surely showing some signs of rust coming off the missed game last week. And you know, when you get a hit as many times as he's been hit this year, that throws off the clock in your head. And sometimes you tend to speed things up. I think Coco still has yet to really settle down in this football game. Richardson punting from his own five. Greg Turner standing at his own 35 for the Huskies. A high spiral which will be returnable. Turner at the 30. He put it on the ground and fumbled it. It's loose. Still no signal. And it's going to be Northern Illinois football. Greg Turner put it on the ground, a 50-yard, one-yard punt. 13 on the return, and that's the end of the first 15 minutes of play here from Oxford, Ohio on homecoming weekend. Garrett Wolf trying to make his mark, trying to get some more votes in the Heisman balloting board when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Oxford, Ohio. And one more look at the punt return fumble by Greg Turner and the aftermath, which is pretty significant too. Turner able to recover his own fumble. Yeah, too much air there between ball and body. And this is what we used to call a trip to the principal's office. Joe Novak comes over, tells Cornelius Cruz, his assistant, I'll, I'll handle this. <laughs> and gives Greg Turner a little piece of his mind. It's a lonely spot over in the field when it's you and the head coach after you've Almost committed a turnover. Well, I noticed Turner ran to the assistant coach in his direction because if you're going to get heated up, yeah, better to take it yeah. from an assistant. Yeah. First down and ten for the Huskies. Good field position on this drive. The pass complete. Kornikevich out down to the 41-yard line. David Kornikevich helping pick up the slack for the injured Jake Nordine. He picked up 16 on that play and a first down for North Illinois. Now, Phil Horvath was the most accurate passer in the country a year ago, 71%. Watch him find the void in between the underneath defender and the safety. And he's able to take a little bit off the football, drop it in over that underneath defender. You got to be able to throw the ball at different speeds and different trajectories to be a top-notch quarterback. First and 10, Garrett Wolf in the backfield. He has 23 yards on seven rushes. Blitz coming. Horvath downfield. Davis. And it's ruled incomplete. Couldn't get his feet down. Britt Davis was working against Frank Wewo. That's a nice matchup. Davis, their big play receiver. Uh, Britt Davis is a 4 4 guy. And this is a pretty nice throw on the run. And Davis did all he could, could not stretch out. Yeah, sometimes receivers get a little lazy and a little sloppy with their feet, but he had to extend there. No chance to get the foot down. 
Second down coming up from the 41 yard line. Three receiver formation. Garrett Wolf in the backfield. Wolf trying to stir the consciousness amongst the Heisman voters with a good performance and a nice pass here complete to Davis at the 37 yard line this time able to stay in bounds and make the catch working once again against Frank Wewo a four yard pickup on the play Northern Illinois really has two big play threats on offense at the spread positions and you got Marcus Perez on one side he's more of an over the top guy that'll run by you Britt Davis is really a stronger wide receiver he can catch a short ball and then take it the distance. Northern Illinois, remember, last year went all the way to the MAC championship game before losing with 10 seconds to go. Trying to get back there again. Horvath fires a dart complete. And it's Davis once again at the 23-yard line. And it's a first down on the 13-yard pickup. Now, Phil Horvath is starting to get a rhythm, and he's getting nice protection up front. They have to be awfully accurate with this slant ball. Let's see who we'll go ahead and freeze it right here. He's going to have to beat Dante Wright with this throw on the slant and just gets it done. Fits it into a tight spot. Nice ball from Horvath. Little movement up front. Talked about Phil Horvath and his accuracy a little bit earlier. He was 20 of 27 last week in their win against Ball State. Actually, over the last two games, he's completing 77% of his throws. And he went to that game last week completing less than 60 on the season. Defense number 92. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Stacy Dales has more. You know, Mark, I talked to Phil about the accuracy, and he just said it's simply chemistry at this point. The last two games, he's finally felt chemistry, and you notice he's thrown to Britt Davis the last two plays. Well, that's the guy that he has the most chemistry with, as he told me, Mark. Uh, Britt Davis, uh, just one half of the Davis brothers, doing a great job in the receiving core. The other one, the tight end, the older brother. And this is Wolf, who's dragged down behind the line of scrimmage at the 21-yard line by Craven. Well, and you talk Phil Horvath, you know, he went up to Columbus against the number one ranked team in the country in the opener. Mark, we were there, and the Buckeyes laid it on him early. They gave Troy Smith and Ted Ginn Jr. short fields early in that football game, and Horvath wasn't very sharp early. And, and I think he really was affected by some of the pressure defensively, came out of that game and was very disappointed. Second and six has regained his confidence since with the aid of Garrett Wolf, who's brought down for little or no gain once again. Sills and Linwood making the stop on the play. And David, one thing that you notice when you watch Northern Illinois in their offensive sets, Wolf is really deep set in the backfield, about seven, almost eight yards, it seems, at times. Well, and some backs get a little bit of leeway in, in that area. They can line up deeper than what is standard, especially if you've had the success that Garrett Wolf has had. Remember, he was a top returning back in the country coming into the season. Third down coming up. They're 2 of 5 on conversions. That pass is incomplete at the 15-yard line. Carter could not hang on to it. That's the bad news. The good news is they are in field goal range for Chris Nende. Fourth down coming up for Joe Novak's crew. Line this one up from about uh, 36, 37 yards out. Mendick, 8 of 11 on the season. He's 15 of 22 career from this distance. This for a seven point lead. And he drills it right down Main Street. Northern Illinois leading 10 to 3. On the 36 yard field goal. Not much Garrett Wolf on that one. So, in the end of this drive, anyway, Nendick with the scoring touch on it. We'll be back with more from Oxford, Ohio, right after this. Came from. Hey guys, touchdown Chad Johnson and. And old school. A little bit of. Uh, pop and lock. Booyah. Ha. Boo no. Next. Sizzling bacon action. No. Touchdown. Chad Johnson. I like it. 
Hmm? But can I get a puff of smoke with that? We can do smoke. That was good. After <laughs> receives the kickoff for Miami. Huskies leading 10 to 3 with 11.46 to go in the first half of play. And folks, Steve McNair, Ray Lewis, and the Ravens. Hey, one of the big stories in the NFL off to a great start this season. And Monday night they visit Jake Plummer and the Denver Broncos. Ray Lewis once ahead and heading up that tough defense. And question the begs, can the Ravens punishing defense stop Plummer and the Broncos offensively? Is it Monday yet? Monday night football on ESPN at 8.30. This one goes deep into the end zone. And Bratton takes the knee. They'll start on their own 20 yard line. Well, the lead didn't last long for the Red Hawks. I'd mentioned that coming into this game, that only led for 41 seconds. They've trailed for almost 300 minutes on the season. Busy weekend in the Mid American Conference as we take a look at what happened yesterday in Mid American Conference play. Penn State still playing well, winning and leading their division 28 17 over Temple. Kent State, State big winners. Kent State leading the West at 3 0. Central Michigan leading the East at 3 0. Coco going up top on the post. Top. Oh, he caught it. Woods is gone. Woods on a quick strike, 80 yards. Dustin Woods with his second touchdown catch this season. And Coco lit up the secondary with a perfect throw that time. His sixth touchdown pass of the season. And the Red Hawks an extra point away from tying this game. I'm not sure if that was called or not. And it's incomplete. A little problem in the kicking game. And it's 10 to 9. Yeah, the Red Hawks had a problem with the hold there. And going back and looking at the touchdown. And Dustin Woods, he's a sub 4 4 guy, and you always have to account for him on the field of play. He's going to get inside the cornerback and Kokel. And from time to time, Kokel's been criticized as a guy who's not very accurate passer, but he is pretty good over the top. His strength is as a deep ball thrower, and you don't throw the post much better than that. Dustin Woods, the 5'11", 188 pound redshirt freshman, got in behind Adriel Hansbro, one of the two twins that plays in the secondary, the other half out of action for now. And uh, boy, after he caught it, there was no catching him. Well, and if he had a culprit, it was Hansbro at the line of scrimmage. If you're going to squat a corner and you're going to have some help over the top. You got to get a piece of Dustin Woods at the line of scrimmage. And Woods, a nice play to get inside the cornerback and to get on his route on the post pass. A career long pass by yeah, quarterback mama, Mike Coco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and back. the sixth of the season. <laughs> Kyle Decker, the holder on the play. Up off the turf. Let's take one more look at that extra point and exactly what happened. Well, the, the snap came back and it was a, a bit high, but still, you know, Kyle Decker, that's one that Kyle Decker should handle and get down. And people forget, Mark Jones, that, you know, there's just like you have good receivers and receivers that aren't, you know, that effective, running backs, players at the respective divisions. Teams have a real advantage when they have a holder that's good in that area. And uh, Decker, you know, that wasn't the type of snap where you'd say, hey, Decker shouldn't have gotten, got it down. And it cost him a point. Right. There's a look at uh, Hansbro. It was victimized on that play in the secondary. And as a result, it's a one point game. Joe Novak's team looking for its third consecutive win. They played well since dropping the first two of the season. On the return, it's Davis. Britt Davis. Looking for an alley. Britt Davis can go. And a nice return by him out to the 46-yard line. 
Everett Davis gives Northern Illinois a good starting field position on the 39 yard kickoff return. Well Garrett Wolf had a big week last week after getting off to a very slow start. In all he rushed for 353 yards on 31 carries had three touchdowns in addition to that had two long runs called back. And by the way he also had a long run of 71 yards in the game. First down and 10 for the Huskies. Nose of the ball resting at the 46. Here's Wolf. Flags down and Wolf bottled up once again. At the 43 yard line. That's going to be a hold against Northern Illinois. Yeah, this is going to come back and you know you're talking about the game last week Mark Jones 353 yards. If you don't take away the 70 yarder and the 45 yarder both touchdowns on holding calls wow. he obliterates the record as set by LaDainian Tomlinson against UTEP. Number 87 that's a 10 yard penalty first down and LaDainian Tomlinson 406 yards against UTEP in his last year at TCU. I mean Garrett Wolf. If you like statistics, a lot of voters in the Heisman voting, they like statistics. If you like statistics, he's got to be the clear choice in the country right now. Well, there are a lot of people with innate biases that will tell you that maybe a player from a smaller conference doesn't deserve to win the Heisman. I beg to differ. But that's one of the arguments out there. Here's Garrett Wolf. Got about two on that play, and you go back to Garrett Wolf. And the performance that he had against Ohio State, the performance he had against Michigan last year, where he ran for 171 and 143 respectively, that says a lot. All right, you go over 140 yards against the Wolverines in the opener a year ago. Now this year at Columbus, 171 yards, had over 100 yards coming out of the backfield as a pass catcher. And, and let's not forget Northwestern, a pretty darn good team in the Big Ten a year ago. He rushed for 245 against the Wildcats. Still trying to get on track tonight, Garrett Wolf. And what a great block by Wolf on the blitz pickup. Pass complete near midfield to Marcus Perez. It was against Joey Card, but we have to show you that block again. I'm sorry, by Garrett Wolf. More than just a runner. Now, this is why he's going to play in the NFL for at least 10 years. Look at that block. I mean, Joey Card is one of the best defensive players in the MAC conference. One of the best safeties you'll see across the country. Let's go and slow it down right there. I mean, that is a heck of a play by Garrett Wolf at five foot seven, 190 pounds. A 13 yard pickup on the play, and sometimes you can't get out of your own way, even if, when you want to. Phil Horvath trips, trying to backpedal away from his center, Adamski. And it's. Fourth down coming up. You hate to see drives implode like that. Mendick comes in to punt from his own 35. Check that dip bear. Ryan Robinson still hasn't had a great opportunity to return a punt. He's the active NCAA leader in punt return yardage. And he returned one last week 80 yards. A directional kick against him. And trying to angle it away, and we'll see where this one gets spotted. They try for the coffin corner. It's going to be marked at about the 21 yard line. They are keeping the ball out of the hands of Ryan Robinson, but this two sports star has so many varied and wonderful skills. We get a look at him on offense when we come back to Oxford, Ohio. So Mike Dick could call you a bedwetting mama's boy. It was great radio. That's all. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. Miami on offense, first down in 10, trailing 10 to 9. Ryan Robinson actually has five of Miami's 10 touchdowns on the season. Let's see what they get done on offense here. Here's Robinson. Makes the catch and a nice gain of about eight on the play. Ryan Robinson, a two sports star, also plays baseball here at Miami University. Actually led the team in uh, 
triples and stolen bases. Not bad. No, Little not. Deion Sanders action going on. Not a bad second baseman. And you know, he's sneaking up on the all-time record as a punt returner. Coming into the game only 143 yards away from being the top punt returner in Division I history. He's a big-time talent. Second and two. Backs line up out of the eye. This is Murphy with a nice block and then Andre Bratton with the run near the first down marker. Picked up three and that's going to be a first down for the Red Hawks. Now the Red Hawks came into this game in a bit of a quandary because if Copel, the quarterback, you like to utilize his running ability, his mobility inside and outside of the pocket, but coming off the concussion and the post-concussion syndrome, you really can't play your trump card. Was bothered by headaches earlier in the week last week. Got to Saturday game day at Cincinnati. And the problem worsened, he was unable to play. Daniel Redabaugh playing in his place. The give is to Bratton once again, this time stopped up. He would, be he would be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. it be second down, about 11 to go. But getting back to Mike Kokel, the starting quarterback, he really seems to become getting more comfortable with the job right now. He won a very competitive three-way battle for the starting job back in summer and spring. And he backed up Josh Betts over the last two years and got a chance to watch Ben Roethlisberger as a junior. 10 to 9, the Red Hawks trail. Kokel fires complete. First down out near midfield to the 48. That's Pat O'Brien. A pickup of 17. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacey Dales down to the field here in Oxford, Ohio. It's homecoming weekend, the 12th meeting all time between Northern Illinois and Miami, Ohio. Northern Illinois has won two of the last three meetings between these two teams, all very competitive and close games. Miami, Ohio looking for its first win of the season. They come in 0-5, but a disclaimer of sorts, just 0-1 in conference play. Kokel, another dart complete to Robinson at the 40-yard line. And Ryan Robinson with another first down. He was working on Hansbro, but was able to pick up 12 on the play. Allen, Kokel, this is impressive. On the roll to his left. And he has to fit this ball into a very small window. Alva Hansbro is out. Adriel Hansbro remains. And you see number 12 gets beat. The cornerback gets beat. And sometimes as a quarterback, you pay the price. Uh, Larry English came in and racked him up a little bit. This time, Kokel making a good career decision, scrambling out of the pocket. Down to the 31-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Dustin Utschig making the stop, but not before he was able to pick up nine on the play. Now we've talked about this offensive line giving up 27 sacks in only five games. That's the worst in the country. And your best friend is a quarterback that can put the ball down and advance it for yards. I mean, Kokel, talk to some of the folks around Miami, Ohio. They say, hey, Without Coco, we might have 40 sacks on the year. Scary. About a yard to go for the first down. Play action. And it's intercepted at the 29-yard line. A great set of hands by linebacker Corey Hansen. His first interception, actually that's the defense's first pick all year. They have been waiting for that one. Well, and as a quarterback, you really can't like this picture. Ryan Robinson is running a flat route, and you have to keep track of the danger out in the flat. And Hanson is going to break underneath, get a piece of the football. And rarely do you see athletic plays by an outside linebacker like that one, and he was working against Ryan Robinson. Here's Horvath. Underneath complete. That's Kornikiewicz, and he gets all the way up to the 36-yard line. Got about six on first down. Between David Kornikiewicz and Brandon Davis, Brandon Beal, the three of them collectively looking to make up for the offensive void left by Jake Nordine, who fractured his leg last week and is done for the season. 
On second down, Garrett Wolf. A flag down, and Wolf is brought down at the 43. And now another flag thrown after the whistle. The first penalty a hold against the Huskies. And we'll have to see what happened after the whistle. Holding number 70 on the offense. Following the play, we got a dead ball, personal foul on Miami on the defense. If I'm not mistaken, by rule now, that becomes a first down. Yeah. Now the Huskies. With personal foul, it's not going to be offsetting. Yep. Garrett Wolf. Uh, let's take a look at the end of the play. Right there at the end of the play. Personal foul, number 33 on the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty. And by rule, with a personal foul, first they mark off the holding call, and then they mark the personal foul call. And this is going to be a first down for Northern Illinois. A little under four and a half minutes to go here in the first half. The stadium clock not working. Clock running with now 420 to go. First down and 10. Garrett Wolf trying to stir the consciousness of the voters, and this is how you get yourself some ballots. Wolf brought down inches from the goal line by Wilson. But that's the kind of lethality he has. He can explode and detonate in a heartbeat. A touchdown saving stop by Robbie Wilson. Uh, defensively, when you're trying to defense Garrett Wolf, you try not to give him the home run. You know he's going to get his yards, he's going to get his runs, but you can't turn him loose. And that was a terrific play by Robbie Wilson to run him down from behind inside the five. How about the cuts? Two lethal cuts by Wolf. Here he is again. Wolf, strength into the end zone. Time to flex if you're Garrett Wolf. Put a little shake on Seth Painter for the score. His second touchdown of the game, and Garrett Wolf now starting to tick and beat and get untracked with 3.46 to go here. Touchdown. Following the play, dead ball. Personal foul on the Surrey Reckless, number 20 on the defense. That penalty to be assessed on the kickoff. Penalty against Chris Shula, the backup linebacker from Cooper City, Florida. That's the ninth rush of 40 or more yards this season by Garrett Wolf on the one that preceded his touchdown run. Can you hear me now? Garrett Wolf, we can hear you loud and clear as the Huskies lead 16 to 9. Set up by that 55 yard run by Garrett Wolf. Actually played defensive back in junior varsity in high school and then had to switch positions because of his injury. Garrett Wolf. Call him George Foreman because he's up in your grill every run. We'll be back with more right after this. This my circle. Sunday, it's all about the pigskin and laundry and some yard work. But mainly, it's about the pigskin. And maybe you should clean the garage while you're at it. But Sunday's also one day till tomorrow. And tomorrow is Steve McNair versus Javon Walker on Monday Night Football. One day till the Ravens head to Denver to battle the Broncos at 8.30. So finish your chores today, because tomorrow is only about the pigskin. Seriously. Welcome back, everyone, to Oxford. Here's a look at the run that set up the touchdown. Yeah, when you spring a long run, you're going to get good blocking down the field from wide receivers. Now, Garrett Wolf and this offensive line will get you to the second level. But look at that play. That's just a heck of a play by Simon. 
to get into the safety card. And Wilson ran Wolf down from behind inside the five. But when you spring a long one, Mark Jones, generally you're getting a nice block down the field from one of your wide receivers. And they do a good job at Northern Illinois. After the personal foul, the Huskies kicking off from midfield at the 50. Comes down at the one yard line to Bratton. And Bratton takes it all the way out to the 35. Reese Davis, how can you not vote? For Garrett Wolf for Heisman, huh? Back to you. He is under consideration on my ballot for sure. Impressive all season long, Jonesy. Coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, Terrell Owens returns to Philadelphia. Wait till you see how that thing ended. We've got Joe Torre out in New York and still under question. We'll give you the latest on that. The new AP College Football poll is out. Some shuffling in the top ten. Yeah, some uh, interesting machinations in the Top 10 this week. First and 10 for the Red Hawks. Pass complete at the 41 yard line to Woods, who had the touchdown catch for 80 yards a few moments ago. You know, we really uh, jammed up the offensive line pretty hard at the top of the show, talking about the number of sacks that they've allowed. But in fairness to them, they've done a nice job so far in this game protecting their quarterback. I think they've done a nice job of keeping Coco clean. They handed off to Murphy, who's back in the ball game. And Murphy with the first down run. All the way down to the 43 yard line where Rush finally stops him. 2.50 to go in the first half. The stadium clock not working. And with 15 just, yard pickup. Just under three minutes to go. You can take your time here. You can bide your time. Plenty of time for Miami. Nice mix of run and pass. Coco working out of the shotgun. Going up top. Again, Woods brought down at the two yard line. First down and goal for Miami. Coco laid it up there with nice touch and a pickup of 40 yards on the play. Now, this is a terrific ball. And again, Woods is going to get inside the cornerback. This time, it's Melvin Rice. That's a nice, crisp route on the post. And Coco let him out over the outside shoulder. Brilliant play between quarterback and wide receiver. First and goal from the three yard line. Murphy takes the handoff. Ran into a group of hostile tacklers at the two yard line. Led by Schroeder and West. It'll be second and goal coming up to the Red Hawks. Uh, if there's been an Achilles heel for this Northern Illinois team, it's been the defense. It's been the big question mark and you go back to the Mac championship game a year ago against Akron. They couldn't seal the deal. The defense on that final drive couldn't come up with the win and it cost them a Mac championship. Lost that game with just 11 seconds to go. It's second and goal here. Coco keeps it. One man to beat and he won't do it. Ken West, the defensive end, stayed home on it. And it's third and goal coming up for the Red Hawks with 121 to go in the first half. Defensive coordinators love to see their defensive ends play with precision. And they also like to see him stay at home and watch Ken West and maintain his shape. Almost gets beat outside. And you could make an argument that Kokel should have just continued to the perimeter on that play. Interesting. And Miami calls a timeout. Shane Montgomery looking for his team's first win this season. We'll be back with more in Oxford right after this. Where will life's journey take you? Maybe you've always known. Or maybe you'll find out one day when you... Third, down, right? Third and goal coming up as Joe Novak's defensive crew doing a nice job on the first two opportunities. Miami coming out of the timeout. Let's see what they call. What do you like here, David? Well, I think with Coco and his ability with his feet, I think you give him a run pass option. You get him outside. I mean, with a, with a quarterback that can move, you always want to give him two options, especially if you're not right down on the goal line. Wood split wide to the top of your screen. Coco under center. Robinson in the slot left. There's Coco under heat, and he's sacked back at the 13 yard line. Ken West once again. 
two times in a row. Ken West put an end to the play. And it's fourth and goal in the ball all the way back where they almost have to think now about a field goal. Well, I think you do go with the field goal here. I mean, you're down eight points and not really much of a decision. And how about the play by Ken West? That's one thing you never like to see as a quarterback. When you come out on a naked bootleg, you come out on a waggle, and you come out of that fake and you're staring that defensive end in the eyes. Lonely, and the play's dead. Lonely feeling. The clock running with 13 seconds to go here in the first half of play. The stadium clock is malfunctioning. That's why it's not up on the screen. And with 10 seconds to go, Miami uses another timeout. Now keep in mind that uh, a few moments ago, that during an extra point attempt, they had some problems with the snap and the extra point subsequently was not good. Now and you have fourth down and goal. Just inside the 15 yard line, I think you could clearly go with the field goal and you're within a touchdown. And you know, I, I, I think we've seen enough of Garrett Wolf again tonight. He is one of the top three or four candidates in the country and, and he just, you know, he blows you away in terms of his cutting ability and he's really turned into a home run back. He's got a more than a handful of runs over 50 yards this season, always a threat to take the distance. 82 yards so far for Garrett Wolf in this game and I pose the question to you, do you think that a player from a mid-major conference like the Mid-American Conference can win or should win or be eligible to win the Heisman Trophy? Well, I think absolutely. We saw Alex Smith as a favorite for the Heisman Trophy or at least one of the three or four favorites a couple years back. David Carr at Fresno State his senior year. I mean, the mid-majors, the system, the BCS system, they brought in another BCS game to accommodate the mid-majors, and I don't know why you wouldn't accommodate them in the Heisman race. Trevor Cook now, David into a point, this field goal from 31 yards out. He's made one already. This time the snap gets down, and Cook knocks it through with six seconds to go here in the first half. Cook is connected from 37 and now 31 yards. And Northern Illinois' lead shaved to five points at 17 to 12. Steve McNair, Ray Lewis, and the Ravens off to a great start this season. And Monday night, they visit Jake Plummer and the Denver Broncos. A lot of people thought McNair might have been finished after he left Tennessee, but not the case. Can the Ravens punish the defense and the offense of the Bronco Broncos? Is it Monday yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. And speaking of Steve McNair, at the game-winning touchdown pass to Todd Heap. Look at this run after the catch. Took some contact, too. That was last week as the Ravens came back to win. Yeah, he is a Q-Dog. <laughs> Popular frat in the NFL, Baltimore, undefeated at 4-0. and And Jake Plummer also putting up good stats, too. Plummer and Todd Heap, both out of Arizona State. And you look at Todd McNair this season, and he's working with three offensive masterminds at Baltimore. You got the head coach, Brian Billick, who's always been known offensively, X's and O's, and you have Jim Fossil, took a New York Giants team to a Super Bowl, and then, and not many people know this, Rick Neuheisel, ex-Colorado, Washington coach at the college level is the quarterback coach for McNair, and you got three go-to guys there as a quarterback. Some bright minds working with him. Squid kick. And the Huskies field it cleanly at the 33-yard line with two seconds to go. Remember, that's one of the new rules. The clock starts when the ball is kicked. And speaking of clock controversies, what about the ending of that Washington-USC game? That was an interesting situation. Well, any way you slice it, there was a problem between the officiating crew and the clock keeper out at the Coliseum. And I think the Huskies, they lost a couple seconds, maybe two or three seconds on the clock after the first down. Ryan Robinson with a couple big plays. Garrett Wolf with 82 yards rushing as we go downstairs to Stacy. Coach, we knew coming into this game you were concerned with Miami's air attack. They've been successful over the top a couple of times. What adjustments do you make defensively? Well, we just have, defensively, well, we can't get beat deep twice. Two big plays. We were lucky to hold them to a field goal there the second time. We can't let them beat us deep. What's the key to Garrett Wolf's success getting rhythm in the second quarter? Well, we got to block better. First quarter, we didn't block anybody. He didn't have a chance, and we sprung him a couple times, and we got to block better to get him loose. Thanks, Coach Mark. Back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Stacy. 
An interesting and intriguing first half of play. The Huskies lead by five. Right now, we're going to go back to Reese Davis in our studio for the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Reese? Welcome to the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Well, Sunday night, college football to get things started. Garrett Wolf trying to add to his Heisman resume. 17-12, Northern Illinois has the lead at the break. Headline game in the NFL on Sunday. The Cowboys and the Eagles. Terrell Owens returning to Philadelphia. T.O. got a typical Philly welcome. They wanted to apply the knockout punch. There's the favorite son. And Donovan McNabb had himself a huge day. McNabb drops back, drops it right into Hank Baskett's bread basket. 87 yards. The Eagles, who were down 21-17 at the time, take a 24-21 lead. As T.O. watches. Third quarter, three-point game, second and ten for Dallas. Drew Bledsoe looking for T.O. No! Goes off of T.O.'s fingers. He had three catches for 45 yards. Not really much of a factor, perhaps looking to see if he was about to get a headgear in the teeth. Fourth quarter, tied at 24, and the Eagles break out a little trickeration. Throwback, McNabb, Reggie Brown. The Georgia star having a much better day than his alma mater had on Saturday night. 18 to 33 for McNabb, 354 for the former Syracuse star, a couple of touchdowns. Fourth quarter, third down, you see Drew Bledsoe trying to throw it down for T.O. It got picked off. Lito Shepard intercepted that. He would intercept another pass and run it back for a touchdown, 38-24 the final. Honestly, I felt at home, you know, regardless of all the boos, the chance, that didn't bother me. You know, uh, I felt like I played um, okay. You know, other than that, you know, the crowd, you know, that's the passion that they have here in Philly. So um, I expected that coming in here. So, uh, you know, that the crowd wasn't a factor for me. I think you guys are smart enough. You guys see the film. Um, you know, if you guys are some experts, you guys can break the film down. I felt like I was open. There was opp opportunities out there for, my, for me to make some plays. We just didn't make them. And so this round goes to the Eagles and Donovan McNabb. In baseball, the New York Daily News is reporting that Joe Torre is likely to be fired. He won four world championships with the Yankees, but none in the last five years. And during that time, George Steinbrenner has paid over $978 million in player salaries. And that Yankees' huge payroll became an albatross. Now it's cleanup days at Yankee Stadium. The question is, are they going to clean out their manager? I hope for his sake he's not. He's been really good to me. He's been really good to the uh, the rest of the team. And, um, you know, I think he's a perfect fit here in New York. It's a, definitely a tough job that he has, and I don't think anybody can do it any better than he has. It's a sad day in New York if that happens. I mean, I think Joe has brought a lot to the community. He's brought a lot to people. Um, he's brought a winner to New York again. I think, uh, you know, if he, if he leaves, it'll be, it'll be sad, but... Unfortunately, in baseball, people always get replaced. I'd hate to see George, Joe leave, but, you know, it's whatever the boss wants. He's the boss for a reason. Well, this is what George Steinbrenner had to say, not necessarily about Torrey directly, but on the Yankees' elimination from the playoffs. I'm deeply disappointed at our being eliminated so early in the playoffs. The result is absolutely not acceptable to me nor our loyal Yankee fans. I want to congratulate the Detroit Tigers organization and wish them well. Rest assured, we'll go back to work immediately and try to right this sad failure and provide a championship for the Yankees, as is our goal every year. And this year, the Yankees didn't get it done. And you see, the first six years of the Joe Torre era in New York, Winning percentage pretty good, but not as good as the last five years. The big difference, the playoff winning percentage. The Yankees three and thirteen or three and ten, I should say, in their last 13 postseason games. So the reports are also saying that the man who will replace Joe Torre, should he actually be fired, would be Lou Pinella. Well, according to a statement, this comes as a complete surprise to the former Devil Rays and Mariners managers, and for that matter, the former Yankee manager. Pinella said he was stunned by the reports, his agent saying that he is considering the four jobs that actually are open right now. Stay tuned. Still no official word from the Yankees on their plans. The Heisman Trophy winner, the other former Heisman Trophy winner from the last two years, the former SC teammates making some noise on Sunday.
Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, Michigan, Penn State, or Arizona State, USC. This Saturday at 8, college football lives here. ESPN College Game Day, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Hispanics are about 14% of the United States population, and most Hispanics in America are under age 25. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute, CHEI, is dedicated to expanding opportunities for young Hispanics, including internships and fellowships on Capitol Hill. These leadership development programs are training the next generation of Hispanic leaders. Find out more about these programs, go to CHEI.org. BET serves up original series just the way you like them. On Wednesday, watch Beef, the series. With Dame Dash, Russell Simmons, The Game, Talib Kweli, Pimp C, Bum B, Paul Wall, DJ K Slade, The Dog Pound, Suge Knight, and many more. Then our next level, go inside the life of Vince Young leading up to the NFL Draft. It all starts Wednesday at 9 on BET. You're watching the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Garrett Wolf in Northern Illinois trying to spoil homecoming in Oxford, Ohio for Miami University. Huskies up by five at the half. NFL this afternoon start with the Bills and the Bears. The former Los Lobo, Brian Urlacher and the Bears trying to stay unbeaten. Oh, Rex in former Mighty Gator, Rex Grossman to Bernard Barry and out of Fresno State. Bears take the 13-0 lead. See the Bears using trips to the left. That leaves Barry and Baez lonesome and is able to beat the coverage for the touchdown. Later in the second, Bears have a 20 to nothing lead. Grossman, Barian, 62 yards. Barian using his speed to beat Terrence McGee and picking up yards after the catch. As Lou Holt says every Saturday, coach, nobody beats you throwing and catching. They beat you by yards after the catch. That's what Barian's able to do there. Grossman had a huge day. He finds Rasheed Davis. Rexy was 15 of 27 of buck 82. The Bears just throttled the Bills. 40 to 7 is the final. Chicago off to a 5 and 0 start. Buccaneers and the Saints. Another one of those great Mac quarterbacks. Bruce Gradkowski out of Toledo playing after Chris Sims had the injured spleen. And Gradkowski he looked like anything but a rookie quarterback making his first start. It's Alex Smith. Gradkowski 20 at 31, 225. Bucks take the lead, 21 17. Here is Reggie Bush. The Heisman Trophy winner hadn't scored a professional touchdown until now. Reggie Bush. Good night and good luck. Sean Payton said he's a guy who can change a game, and he changed this one today. Bush's first career touchdown gives the Saints the lead at 24-21. But in the closing seconds, Tampa Bay trying to rally behind Gradkowski. Very similar to what we saw the Jets try against the Colts last week. Joey Galloway had it for a while, and Galloway ends up getting tackled. Reggie Bush and the Saints, 24-21. Dolphins and Patriots, the old pals and colleagues, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban. Saban going with Joey Harrington in place of Dante Culpepper, the dictator saying Culpepper was too banged up. Tom Brady wasn't. He finds Troy Brown. New England leads 13 to nothing. Fourth quarter, 13-10 Patriots. Brady can't find former University of Central Florida star Doug Gabriel, but Will Allen gets whistled for pass interference. You take another look at this. The dictator was furious. It was first and goal for the Patriots after the game. Saban said it was a good call, but we've got some bad rules on the next play. Brady, Heath Evans, touchdown. Patriots are 4-1. They beat the Dolphins 20-10. Chiefs and the Cardinals. We saw Reggie Bush making magic. His old USC teammate, Matt Leiner, making his first career start. Third and 10, Leiner looking for Anquan Bolden. Right on the money. Liner 22 of 35, 253 yards, threw a couple of touchdown passes, and was deadly accurate on this ball to Bolden, who never broke stride. Cardinals taking the 7 0 lead. Fourth quarter, Damon Hewitt, a tight game, tied at 20. From the Chiefs 13, Larry Johnson. We are Penn State, 79 yards, but watch what Antrell Roll does here. Very dangerous play. 
flagged for a face mask, and rightfully so. 15-yard variety. Johnson would eventually walk off under his own power, and he's been diagnosed as having a neck strain. Thankfully, it was not any more dangerous or any more a bigger injury than that as you see them attending to Johnson there. Chiefs kicked a field goal, took a 23 to 20 lead. And later in the fourth with seven seconds on the clock as LJ walks off the field. Neil Rackers is going to try to tie the game from 51 yards out. And though Rackers is from Illinois, he goes all Florida State on it and goes wide right. Chiefs hang on to beat the Cardinals. 23 to 20. Redskins and Giants. LeVar Arrington against his former team. His old linebacker coach Dale Lindsay said he can't exactly help them with the schemes since he didn't know our schemes when he played here anyway. Second quarter tied at three. Eli Manning. Plexico Burris. Look at Sparty making a play. 46 yards there. Led to a Giants field goal. Made the score 6-3. Closing seconds of the half. Eli's coming. And Eli's throwing. Tim Carter over the middle for 27. Giants kicked another field goal, made it 9-3. Now Manning knows he's got a tall receiver out there, and Plax makes the catch. Manning, 23 at 33, 256. Giants win over the Redskins, 19-3. Sunday night game right now. Steelers are leading the Chargers just before halftime, 10 to nothing. Just over 90 seconds left to go there. Willie Parker has a nine-yard TD run. He's got 44 yards on 10 carries. Ben Roethlisberger, including the Super Bowl, no touchdown passes, seven interceptions in his last three games. That is entering the game tonight. Tomlinson has been held to one yard on six carries so far. When we come back on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, we'll see whose cars performed the best in the chase for the cup. The Pontiac Performance Halftime Report is powered by Pontiac. Vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance. Go to ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. But we compete within the rules of the game, and we ask that you do the same by being great fans and by demonstrating good sportsmanship. Good sportsmanship epitomizes a competitive experience for all who support college football. Let's make this game a memorable and enjoyable experience for everyone. Make it a great day for NCAA football. Thank you and enjoy the game. Welcome back to the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Racing the UAW Ford 500 at Talladega. Dale Jr., always a fan favorite there, as was his treat to watch. He's a Heisman candidate, Garrett Wolf, putting on a show. The Pontiac Performance Halftime Report is powered by Pontiac. Vote for this week. Football poll still has Ohio State at the top. Florida up to number two. Gators have a showdown with now number 11 Auburn on ESPN. 7.45 Eastern time Saturday night. Tigers pull the upset. They will be able to go zooming back up the rankings. You can vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance. Go to ESPN.com, search Pontiac. These are the four plays and items up for bids. Winner will be announced during our coverage of Thursday night football, Virginia Tech Boston College. National League Division Series. Who thought this series would be the last one going in the LDSs? Padres and Cardinals are tight at two as they play in the top of the six. Cardinals lead the series two games to one. Garrett Wolf, a little over 80 yards in the first half. He's found the end zone. Northern Illinois up 17-12. Success on the field. Success in the classroom. Success in life. Back football, 60 years of success. And welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Sunday Showdown. Presented by Altel Wireless. Northern Illinois, the Huskies leading 17 to 12 over the Red Hawks of Miami. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacey Dales down at the sidelines joining us in just a few. And we started off at the top of the night talking about Garrett Wolf, the leading rusher in the nation, setting incredible records already this season. He had 82 yards rushing in the first half, but what do you make of the fact in that he got most of them in large bursts? Well, really, he had 10 carries for 11 yards, a two 
carries where he was able to produce the big yards for the half, a 16-yard run, and, of course, the breakaway run for 55 yards. I thought Miami did a good job bottling up him up. The key is to not give him that home run you know, type of threat, the, the run where he can take it the distance. And, you know, very clearly Miami has held him below his average this night through one half of play. I would say and his average coming into the game, 236. 236. <laughs> a fat 236, the fastest player to reach over 1,000 yards rushing in the first five games. But when you look at the big picture of this game, Miami comes in 0-5, 0-1 in conference play, uh, acquitted themselves well in the first half. Well, I think it's only a matter of time. Remember, this team has won at least seven games in each season since 2000. So Shane Montgomery, I think, is going to get this ship righted. Kokel really played well in the second quarter. You look at the mistakes. They had the ball first and goal on the three. They didn't score. The holding call by Brandon Murphy really stopped a drive. A couple turnovers, including the muff on the punt. I really think Miami had a great shot to be leading this game if you take away the turnovers here at halftime. Mike Kokel did not play in last week's game a loss against Cincinnati in Cincinnati because of severe headaches the day of the game but he has come back and uh, presented several headaches for the defense of Northern Illinois the Huskies kicking off to begin the second half the Red Hawks will have the ball to start here in the third quarter and they'll start from their own 20 yard line as Bratton takes a knee let's go downstairs to Stacy. Well, Mark, David just talked about it. How do you limit Garrett Wolf? And I asked Coach Shane Montgomery that. Shane said, well, we knew we'd get it. he'd get his yardage in the first half, but we have to get him behind or in terms of the line of scrimmage, keep him behind the line of scrimmage, and we have to make the first down short. We've got to force him into second and long and uh, third and long situations. And, of course, he gave his message to the team. We have to make a statement in this game. It's a critical situation for us. It's a 0-0 game at this point, guys. All right, and uh, we've got a little work to do. Murphy in the backfield. Kokel fires a dart to one of his favorite targets on the night, Dustin Woods, who has two long receptions, one of them going for 80 yards and a touchdown. As we take a look at the first half statistics, total yardage, the edge going to Miami. And the rushing yards, uh, a paltry, I say in quotations, 66 yards for the Huskies. We have an injured player down in the field at the 27 yard line. It's Adriel Hansbro, AKA twin. He's one of a couple twins that play in the secondary. His twin brother, Alva Hansbro, was injured a couple of weeks ago and is out for the next few weeks. Hansbro and Melvin Rice, the starting cornerbacks. Now with Adriel Hansbro going down here, three of the starters from three weeks ago in the backfield for Northern Illinois down. Bradley Pruitt, the safety, lost for a couple weeks. And Mark Reeder being forced to fill in for him, and that's the look you get from your head coach when one of your guys goes down. Melvin Rice last year was the nickelback. Now in the regular rotation. Starting corner, it's second down and one for Mike Kokel. Murphy on the handoff, stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. A nice surge in the middle between Crutch and Schroeder. Third and short coming up. And you notice the uh, ubiquitous Ken West always around the ball. Now Ken West has had a nice game tonight and really he had not been giving him the production the Huskies a production from the defensive end that was expected coming into the season has gotten off to a slow start through September and early October but tonight he is stepping up to the task third down and one a four receiver formation the pass is going to be ruled incomplete but there's a flag on the play against Spencer Williams and he was defending against Dustin Woods. Holding number 27 on the defense on an eligible receiver. That's a 10 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Well, Dustin Woods has really emerged. The redshirt freshman in this football game. Big plays all over the field and 
You know, once you beat Williamson, number 27, inside, that's a tough play for a safety to come through the back of the wide receiver. And if the quarterback places the ball in that front pocket, really not a lot you can do. Nice ball again from Coker. First down and 10, working against this defense, which has seven starters returning from a season ago for Northern Illinois. Coker with plenty of time, incomplete. That pass might have been a little bit hot at the 43-yard line for Sean McVeigh. But the story tonight, as we see a flag down on the field back at the 29-yard line, is Dustin Woods, an 80-yard touchdown reception on this play. That one going for a touchdown, and another long one a little bit later. He was tackled down at the one-yard line. They were unable to score and set up a field goal right before the end of the first half. Well, he's had the two big plays over the top, both both of them on post balls, but he's also had a lot of success work in the short and intermediate zones. And you know, Ryan Robinson, he's going to attract a lot of attention. Teams like to double team him, and that's going to free up Woods. First down and 10. The back's lining up out of the eye this time. Murphy dots the eye, and he takes the handoff. Brandon Murphy scooting. Inside the 40 yard line, a nice gain of about six or seven on the play. Ustig making the stop. Dustin Ustig right there led Northern Illinois last year in tackles. Uh, you see a little bit of Garrett Wolf here in Brandon Murphy. A smaller back, nice cuts in between the tackles, and great vision. Sets up a second down and four with 12.48 to go. In the third, out of the backfield, incomplete. Intended for Ryan Robinson. We talked of his varied skills, Ryan Robinson, uh, not only on the football field, but baseball-wise, too. He had a Deion Sanders moment as a junior. He played eight and a third innings, went three for four, a couple of stolen bases in a baseball game. They won. Went across the street to the football stadium here, Jaeger Stadium. Caught five passes for 102 yards, a couple of touchdowns in the spring game. But he didn't have to take a helicopter like Deion did. You know? Get it done, Ryan. Get it done. Third down and four coming up. Pressure coming, a nice call with the screen. And what a move by Murphy, but not enough to get the first down. He's tackled at the 40-yard line. Fourth down coming up, Ken West once again. And this is a spot on the field where, you know, you're not gaining that much in terms of field position. In fourth and five, Shane Montgomery's going to play conservatively, but you get down around the 40-yard line, and in between the 35 and 40-yard line, that's a nice place to go for it on fourth down, fourth and less than five. They send in the punt team. Richardson standing on his own 47. And this one's going to be down inside the five yard line. And Garrett Wolf and the Northern Illinois offense will be 99 yards away from scoring. A 40 yard punt. Nothing on the return. Garrett Wolf got off to a very slow start, but had 82 yards at the break. It was an inauspicious, inauspicious beginning, and that's the way it looked first couple of plays. But as we mentioned, he got him in big chunks when he did. A 55-yard run, and then that set up this touchdown run, his second of the night. He's got a couple of scores, and it's first down and 10. Standing six yards deep in his own end zone. Wolf gets out to the six, got about five. Tackled by Joey Card, and it was Joey Card that took that blow from Garrett Wolf, as we saw that he knows something about pass protection, too. Well, you have to do three things as a back well to play at the next level. And you don't, you can't get into the league and just pack the mail. You got to be able to block, and you got to be able to catch the ball coming out of the backfield. And Wolf has established himself as a triple threat. Second down and four. Horvath complete to Brandon Davis. And Brandon Davis continues to emerge as a key cog offensively for the Huskies. Out of bounds with 11-11 to go here in the third quarter. Well, Davis is a load. 265 pounds. And you talk to Joe Novak. Novak says there's more than one team this year where 
You got defensive secondary players that aren't too excited about coming up and tackling him. He will lower the boom on you after catching the football. Brandon Davis, his younger brother, Britt Davis, the star wideout for the Huskies. Third down and two coming up. Garrett Wolf, like insurance, gets the first down beyond the 15 yard line. He picked up seven in that burst. Leads the country in rushing all purpose yards and scoring. Well, and you look at his stature, 5'7, about 185, 190 pounds. But re what really impresses you is his ability to be a physical runner. Uh, he's not just a guy who wants to bounce it to the outside and take the ball to the perimeter. He's, he's a guy who's comfortable running the ball between the tackles. First down and 10. Horvath going downtown. A lot of contact down the sidelines and a flag thrown as Britt Davis was working against Gaines, Jared Gaines, number 33. Yeah, there was some contact both ways on that go right down the left sideline. Defense. Pass interference, number 33. That's a 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Now, when you play eight and nine men up on the line of scrimmage, you're going to have to get a big game from Gaines and Wewo, the two quarterbacks from Miami. They're going to be locked up outside man-to-man -man all night, and occasionally you're going to lose the battle. Now, Gaines has been playing pretty well tonight, Mark Jones, yeah. playing physically on the outside, and they have not given... Horvath a lot of looks down the football field. Yeah, Gaines has an interception already tonight. First down and 10, though, after the pass interference call. Garrett Wolf bouncing it to the edge. Garrett Wolf brought down at the 37-yard line by Joey Hudson. Picked up seven. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacy Dale's down to the field. We're here at Jaeger Stadium. In Oxford, Ohio, it's homecoming weekend. It's the Sunday showdown presented by Alltel Wireless. And Northern Illinois leads Miami 17 to 12 in this an interdivisional battle in the Mid-American Conference. Garrett Wolf had 82 yards at halftime and now seems to be getting on track. He has a couple of scores, too. Second down and three. That time met behind the line of scrimmage. His forward progress is going to be marked at the 33. Joey Hudson said hello again. Well, Joey Hudson is an interesting guy, and you know, we talk about the Mac and playing against top-notch competition. Joey Hudson had a couple interceptions against Purdue up at West Lafayette, and the second of those interceptions, he put his team in a position to win that football game. Miami couldn't capitalize on a 39-yarder to win the game. Purdue took him to overtime and won. In a hard luck season, the Red Hawks. Third and seven, Horvath with time. Undershoots one of his receivers and overshoots the other. It was incomplete, intended for Matt Simon. Fourth down coming up, they'll have to punt. Now the Red Hawks have had some success. When you play a lot of men up on the line of scrimmage, you give a quarterback and wide receivers opportunities down the field, but the flip side of that is eight and nine defenders on the line of scrimmage can get to the quarterback a heck of a lot quicker. And I think this defense has got Phil Horvath off stride. And right now Miami just pining for an opportunity for Ryan Robinson to get just a chance, an opportunity to return one of these punts. Dick Benner has kept it away from him very well tonight. And he angles it for the sideline, but Robinson will have a chance. Ryan Robinson, the NCAA's active all-time leader in punt return yardage, returns this one to the 32-yard line, a 49-yard punt, 14 on the return. Robinson and the Red Hawk offense taking to the field when we return. Sunday. Welcome back, everyone, to Oxford, Ohio. This telecast available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. Homecoming weekend here in Oxford, Ohio. And Coach Shane Montgomery's crew right now trailing 17 to 12 with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. First down and 10 from their own 32 yard line. So Dustin Woods has been a key cog offensively for the Red Hawks. This time it goes the other way. 
And a pass is complete at the 46 yard line to Pat O'Brien. Picks up a first down. Picked up 14 on the play. And obvious run situations, play action can really create opportunities. A nice play action in the backfield by Kokel. And he's going to flash a little arm strength on this throw. And no doubt that he can throw all the balls. From time to time, he'll lack the accuracy department, but that was a pretty impressive ball to the outside. On first and 10, Ryan Robinson on the pop play. Takes it across midfield to the 48-yard line. Got about four or five, and the new AP rankings came out today, and here's a look at them. Ohio State still at number one, getting almost a consensus of the votes. Florida moving up to number two. USC at number three. They take on Arizona State next week. Some of the other games yesterday, Mark Jones. How about Auburn just getting manhandled down on the plains by Arkansas? Third down. Auburn dropped all the way out of the top 10 to the 11th spot in the rankings, and USC has been a bit of an enigma. Do you think they're a little uh, overrated, Not dare I say? They, they There's some that kind of whisper that. Struggled against the Washington School, struggled against Arizona, but remember, that's the same team that went down and waxed Arkansas. Third, Third down and two coming up. Murphy stopped up short of the first down at the 46-yard line by Larry English. There's seven minutes to go now in the third quarter. I'll tell you, going back to the rankings that we saw, the game that really was shocking to me was how Tennessee just kept running up and down the field against Georgia in the fourth quarter. I mean, Georgia could not stop them. And early in the second half, it looked like Georgia was going to win that football game. Some big, big turnarounds, and I think everybody's focused on Michigan and Ohio State. You know, there's a lot of people that follow college football closely that are looking at those two teams and feeling like they'll be undefeated when they meet in late November. Yeah, that turns into a de facto conference championship game maybe in the Big Ten. Richardson's punt goes high. Last time they were able to down it on the one yard line, not this time. It'll come out to the 20 after the 46 yard punt. Phil Horvath completed 70% of his passes a season ago, the highest in the nation. Looking for a little more breathing room on the scoreboard when we return the Huskies on offense. All the players around him better. This time the pitch to Wolf and the give to Britt Davis back the other way. Nice gain, a first down pickup. But Garrett Wolf attracts so much attention, it gives you a lot of options on offense. Horvath on the play fake. Incomplete at midfield, batted down by Jared Gaines. Second and ten coming up. Garrett Wolf still looking to eclipse 100 yards rushing in this game. 16 rushes for 98 so far. One of the great stories in college football. So many compelling stories across the country right now. Saw one of them yesterday. Here's Wolf in the present. Garrett Wolf has the first down and ran over a defender. Number six, Robbie Wilson. Now this was the most impressive run of the night by Garrett Wolf. I mean, he absolutely froze Jared Gaines on the outside. Slow it down right here. I mean, Gaines on his numbers. Flat on all fours and just a stunning cut by Garrett Wolf to set it up. Look at the cut outside and then the ability to get to the corner, beat Robbie Wilson to the first down chain. Here's Horvath to pass. And it's incomplete. Intended for Perez. And that last run by Garrett Wolf. Going back to that, his 11th consecutive now 100 yard rushing game in the 20th of his career. Perez couldn't keep that one in. 
And ball was ruled incomplete, but taking a look at his numbers, Mark Jones. Yeah. Not bad for a guy that when he first stepped on campus in DeKalb was ninth on the depth chart. I mean, you needed an electron microscope to find him. He was so far down on the depth chart. <laughs> Who told you that? You can't have nine <laughs> tailbacks on your roster. He was. That's what they tell us. Here he is. Garrett Wolf. Cross midfield down to the 45 yard line. Closing in on rewriting more records in the NCAA record books. We talked about him being on pace to maybe become the all time leading rusher in NCAA history. That record held by Barry Sanders. 2,628 yards back in 1988. And Barry Sanders won the Heisman Trophy that year. Coming into this game, Garrett Wolf was the ninth back to go over 1,000 yards in the first five games. Three other backs have done that and also won the Heisman. Third and three, backside pressure, and Horvath is sacked back at the 48. Gaines and Sills there to make the hit. And a key stop for the Red Hawk defense. Well, Northern Illinois is going from the left hash, and as a quarterback, you've got to have eyes in the back of your head. You can't lose sight of the cornerback, and Horvath should have had Gaines in his sights there. And once again, Doug Free, the left tackle, getting beat, coming out and trying to get a chip on Gaines. And Free has been a pretty impressive tackle throughout the year, working against defensive ends, but Gaines a little bit quicker. Did better going to punt from his own 39. Ryan Robinson standing on his 10-yard line. He's been able to return just one punt tonight, and he won't get an opportunity at this one either. It's going to be spotted around the 18 yard line and Mike Kokel has taken a lot of heat been criticized and finally won a hotly contested job against two other potential quarterbacks. But he's the man right now coming off of those headaches and ready to get to work on offense when we come back. Yeah I was just. And welcome back everyone to Oxford Ohio. First down and 10 for Mike Kokel and the Miami Red Hawk offense. Right now, Northern Illinois leading 17 to 12. Gotta get all those commercials in for Miami looking for its first win of the season. They come in 0 and 5 overall, 0 and 1 in conference play. But they rest on the fact that a couple of years ago they started off 0 and 2 and still won a share of the East Division title. First down and 10. Kokel downfield intended for Woods. And it's ruled complete at the 39 yard line. That's something that we've said often tonight. Well, Coco got off to a tough start tonight in the first quarter. A little bit of erratic with his accuracy. Didn't have a great feel in the pocket. And you can expect that after the week off. Missing last week's game with the concussion. But he has settled down and he is throwing the ball with accuracy and rhythm. And really getting good work from the big guys up front. Coco right now, David, 10 of his last 12 passing for over 200 yards. Ryan Robinson got the fake handoff, and this pass complete to McVay. And McVay gets another first down at the 47. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Jonesy's Sunday's Best, presented by All Tell Wireless. You guys are watching a Heisman Trophy candidate. Here's the guy who owns the latest Heisman Trophy, Reggie Bush of the Saints. His punt return proved to be the game winner against Tampa Bay. 24-21 New Orleans won Reggie Bush's first NFL touchdown. All right, Reese. I wonder if uh, Reese voted for Reggie Bush for the Heisman last year. I think pretty much everybody did. <laughs> Coco was hit as he delivered it, and it's caught by Morton Green. E.J. Morton Green came back and made a great adjustment and it's first and goal. What a play that time by E.J. Morton Green. Uh, this is a terrific play and a dangerous throw. Not the best throwing decision we've seen from Kokel tonight. He's got hot breath on his neck in the pocket and sometimes you count on your wide receivers to make you look good. Morton Green going up using that big six foot three frame. Look at him use his body. Make a terrific catch down the football field. There's a handoff Murphy. Bratton got a nice block and touchdown. Andre Bratton. 
Patton with the touchdown scamper to give Miami its first lead of the game. And Bratton with his first career touchdown. Now, uh, decision time. Do you go for two? Well, some teams will go for two in this situation. And they also have the older, the holder, Decker, injured as well as a long snapper tonight. So that figures into the decision. If you don't have those two players injured, I think you kick the extra point too early in the football game to go for two here. There's going to be points scored here in the fourth quarter. I think you take the point without those injuries. There's Coco. And it's incomplete. It's broken up by Blaylock. But that touchdown set up by Morton Green. And also set up by some great zone blocking up front by the big fellas. And Brandon Murphy, understandably, is going to be overshadowed coming into this football game. But he's coming off a thousand yard year season ago. And then and the then, two point conversion moments ago, no good. Well, and again, with with your snapper and your holder out, I understand the decision. Without those injuries, Mark Jones, I I don't think you go for it. I think you go for the one point there and get as many points as you can going into the fourth quarter. It's interesting because a couple of years ago, Northern Illinois was facing a one and six Miami, Ohio team coming in here, and they were warned that hey, Miami's oh, Miami, Ohio is down, but be ready. What happened? Miami wins at 31-17. So. You got to know that uh, Coach Joe Novak sounded the alarm well before they arrived here yesterday afternoon. And right now, this Miami team looks anything but like an 0-5 team. Well, remember the Red Hawks 0-5, but four of those losses have come against BCS Conference schools. And, and they took Purdue to overtime at West Lafayette. I mean, this team has played against tougher competition. You know, with the exception of Ohio State, Northern Illinois has not played against the same competition that Miami has. And I think the Red Hawks have caught Northern Illinois on a nice night for an upset. A short kick that comes down to the 18-yard line. This is Britt Davis who takes it out near the 35 and a big game yesterday on the college football landscape LSU Florida in the second quarter Tim Tebow you talk about unorthodox passes this looks like a jump shot a <laughs> double pump jumper that hits nothing but I don't know what you hits nothing but receiver I mean that looked like the guy when you used to play basketball on your block that was the guy that got picked last right there that's what he looked like and he got in through two touchdown passes this is the second one. That one put Florida up 23 to 7. That one went to Lewis Murphy and uh, Florida won that. Undefeated at 6 and 0. Garrett Wolf brought down just shy of the first down. Interestingly enough, Garrett Wolf. He was not a highly recruited player coming out of high school, coming out of Chicago. He admits that he was not the best of students. And thus a lot of teams backed off of him, but one of the teams that did get in on him late was Arizona State and the team we just saw play, Florida. Well, and, and Garrett Wolf is, is a guy who has not only been unbelievable statistically, but he's developed into a tremendous leader. And one of the best leaders that Joe Nav Novak has seen in his many years of coaching. He's been terrific with the media and handling the media attention. And it lights, lights you up when he walks into a room. And there have been many instances that Joe Novak has pointed out Garrett Wolf during the offseason and into this 2006 season has really taken the reins as a leader on this football team. Second down and one. Right now, his team trailing. Horvath completes it for the first down at the 47 yard line. Kornikavich and Stacy has more on Wolf. Now, Mark, you guys talk about Wolf's leadership, and I, I asked him about it, what he's done lately in terms of leadership. He actually called a meeting on Wednesday morning after two days off this week, and he addressed the team. He talked about exactly what you guys just talked about, playing Miami of Ohio, 0-5 record. Not that great, but a team that's played quality competition, and he really wanted to focus this team. They need it now, Mark. Yeah, they need some concentration. They trail on the post. And it's caught at the 15 yard line. A leaping grab by Britt Davis, who got in behind Jeff Thompson to pick up 38 yards. And the Huskies are in scoring territory. There's a flag, though, back on the play. Holding. 
Number 62 on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Doug Free not having one of his better evenings, I think you'd have to say. No, he's not. And Doug Free is a guy who our own Mel Kuyper at ESPN schedules to go in the draft next spring, either in the first or second round, and watch the big guy work here. He's going to negate a big play down the football field and a tremendous catch by Britt Davis. And working against Travis Craven, a redshirt freshman, also got up into his face mask a bit there. And it took away a big play, and that was a, a heck of a throw by Horvath to drop that on Davis and maybe even a better catch. Makes it first down and 20. Approaching a minute to play in the third. Horvath down the sideline complete. And they get the yardage back on the catch. That was Simon who made the grab in the big pickup. Matt Simon coming off a fractured ankle, which forced him to miss all of last season, looking in fine form to pick up 37. No flag on that play. Another minute to go. Phil Horvath, those are back-to-back -back impressive throws. Look at his feet, getting set on that back right foot, staying loaded, and dropping the ball out accurately to the sideline. Garrett Wolf on the zone play, breaks a tackle. Garrett Wolf on the move. Wolf still charging, still making room. And all the way down to the six yard line, he got 19, a majority of that yardage, David, coming after he took some hits. Well, and he's so deceptive, the lower body strength. And Northern Illinois will give you a heavy dose of zone blocking. That gives Garrett Wolf the luxury of picking his holes. He's got the great vision to see the seams and then the power with the lower body to run through tackles. Impressive play by Garrett Wolf. Now 148 yards. First and goal, blitz coming. Wolf gets the handoff and he's brought down back at the 11-yard line by Joey Hudson. He has been a big play godsend for Miami this year. Talked about the two picks he had in the overtime loss against Purdue. And a key play there with four seconds to go in the third period. Garrett Wolf, the leading rusher in the nation, starting to get untracked offensively. Being held below his average, but when you come in averaging 236, that's kind of easy to do. Miami with the lead when we come back for the fourth period. Monday, coincidentally, rhymes with fun day, but with an M and an O. Point is, it's Monday Night Football Day, beginning with a special edition of Sports Center, then around the horn, followed by PTI with Michael Wilbon and Tony Kornheiser. After that, recap all of Sunday's action on NFL Primetime, followed by Monday Night Countdown with Boomer and the whole gang. Then it's ESPN Monday Night Football. Ray Lewis and the Ravens are in Denver to face Jake Plummer's Broncos. Is it Monday yet? 15 different varsity sports in action over the weekend here in Oxford, Ohio. None more deserving, demanding of the spotlight than this football game on national telecast. Garrett Wolf, in the midst of his Heisman campaign, the nation's leading runner, starting to mount those numbers up. But right now his team trailing by a single point, 18 to 17. But right now, Northern Illinois answering with a very impressive drive. And there's a look at the breakdown by quarter for Garrett Wolf. He has uh, started to pick the tempo up a little bit. In the third quarter, had nine rushes for 62 yards. Second and goal. Wolf. Hard hitting in there. You could hear those pads from up in our broadcast position. Third and goal coming up. Wolf got about three. A lot of noise down there between the tackles, really slinging the leather around. And that shows you that Garrett Wolf's not afraid to stick his nose in there. And yeah, that was a great term you used, Mark Jones, answering, you know, answering the bell on this drive. And I think a lot of it has had to do with Phil Horvath and his passing down the field, loosening things up for Garrett Wolf. Rick Davis is split wide to the bottom of your screen. Pressure coming. Horvath incomplete. Intended for Davis in the end zone. He was working against Wewo, and it's fourth down. In comes the field goal unit. 
Led by Chris Nindick. And Horvath missed Britt Davis. He had him wide open on the goal line. Defender behind. And a rare misfire from Phil Horvath. Poorly thrown ball behind Davis. And an opportunity for six goes by the boards. Nendick, 9 of 12 on the season, already made one from 36 yards today. This one from 25. And he's a perfect 14 for 14 from that distance between 20 and 29 yards. The Huskies re retake the lead after Miami seized the lead just a few moments ago. Coming up on Monday Night Football, it's the Broncos and the Ravens. Mike Tirico has more. Has there been a bigger impact addition in the NFL this year than Steve McNair? He's led two straight last-minute comebacks, helping Ray Lewis and the Ravens open up perfect 4-0. Denver's defense has allowed one touchdown in three games. Jake Plummer and Javon on the chemistry. Baltimore in Denver at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. All right, Mike, back here. Uh... Two-point contest, that last scoring drive, eight plays, 58 yards, using up a little over three minutes on the clock. Phil Horvath wants this one back. Good protection by his interior lineman. The edge is sealed off. Nice pocket to throw from. And watch this ball. Let's it go high. He had Davis to the inside. Uh, that's rare that you see Phil Horvath miss that opportunity. You lay it on Britt Davis's numbers there. And he extend the lead. Horvath uh, putting up good numbers, as I mentioned, the last two games, completing over 77% of his passes. Nice to see him rebound from that broken left arm that he suffered at the end of last season, which forced him to miss the last three games. This is McVeigh. Sean McVeigh takes it out to the 25-yard line. And now here's Reese Davis for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Mark Terrell Owens returned to Philadelphia with the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't go as he had hoped. Three catches, 45 yards, and with the Cowboys driving, hoping to tie Lito Shepard a pick six and went over 100 yards. Frustrating day. I know it's stunning to see Keo upset on the sideline. New York Daily News reporting that Joe Torrey likely to be fired. Some reports also saying he'll be replaced with by Lou Pinella. That is not definite yet. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News Now. All right, Reese. You know, I like passionate players, but I'm not sure if it's a good thing to jump ugly in your coach's face like T.O. seems to do. Bratton in a tailback, and Robinson throws the option downfield, and it's caught at the 27-yard line by O'Brien. Ryan Robinson showing off his passing skills. He can make contributions in so many different ways. Well, and just a nice job of beating the defensive back to the football. And, you know, at the college level, cornerbacks don't typically play the ball very well in the air. Melvin Rice did not get his eyes Number back to the quarterback. The defense has a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. They're going to tack on some more yardage. Larry, Larry English. English, number 51. Wow. That's a dangerous play. Now, he did try to hold Ryan Robinson up, but that was after helmet to helmet. And a pretty nice throw by Ryan Robinson. Not bad. 48 yards in all. How about O'Brien looking back and making a play? Once again, a wide receiver helping out his quarterback down the field. Bratton in a tailback on first and 10. Pocos going to take off on a predetermined run. Makes it down to the 10. Got about three or four. Benson making the stop for Northern Illinois. Miami looking for its first win of the season. Northern Illinois looking for its third consecutive win after dropping the first two games of the season. And you look at Mike Kokel's numbers, and he really has been a lot more selective, Mark Jones, running the football. He, coming off the concussion, you can't really utilize him with his legs as much as you'd like to. He's looking at second and seven here. Bratton 
Slips a couple of tacklers and is brought down to the 10, but there's a flag down back at the 16-yard line. And that's going to be against Miami. Yeah, another hold. You know, Miami has really had too many mistakes in this football game. They should be leading this game by at least a touchdown if they had cut back on the turnovers and the holding calls, the muffed punt. Been a trying season for head coach Shane Montgomery. They lost 20 seniors last year. Holding number 50 on the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. I mentioned they lost a lot of seniors. 16 of them were starters. And the mood, though, was still surprisingly good. They have 11 seniors on this year's squad, uh, but just six of them starters. And they have endured a litany of injuries as well. Second and 17 coming up for the Red Hawks. Andre Branton, the lone back. A three receiver formation for Miami. Complete Woods took a jolt at the nine yard line but hung on. And it's going to be close to the first down. The anticipation and reacting to the football is so critical as a wide receiver. This ball probably had a little bit more velocity than you'd like on it. And he led him a little bit further to the inside, but look at Woods reach out and just gobble up that football. That could have been an interception, a deflection by the receiver. That is an impressive play by Woods, and this has been his coming out party tonight. Yeah, sure has, to the tune of 167 yards receiving. Sets up a third down and six. Poco underneath, complete, and a nice stop at the four-yard line. The catch made by Ken. We talked about answering on offense. This has been a pretty impressive drive by the Red Hawks. First and goal coming up. There's Corbin, who made that reception moments ago. Clock running with 11.22 to go in the final period. First down and goal. Coco looking sharp this week after missing last week's game because of headaches. Bratton. Touchdown, Miami. Andre Branton with his second score of the day. He and Brandon Murphy have teamed up, put some good numbers up in the backfield, and the Red Hawks seize the lead again. They get the hold down, and the snap was clean. And it's 25 to 20. Look at the shake that Branton put on Uchting. We'll be back with more from Oxford, Ohio, right after this. Coming up on SportsCenter, a wild shootout in Philly, a game-winning run back in New Orleans, and a controversial finish at Talladega. Plus, why Joe Torre should be back in the Bronx. It's SportsCenter after the game. Welcome back, everyone. ESPN Full Circle presenting a huge SEC showdown. You can get the game from every angle possible. ESPN brings you the traditional telecast as Florida looks for a big win on the road against Auburn. ESPN 2 offers commentary on the fly from Colin Coward and the game day crew. And ESPN U puts you in the director's chair with multiple camera choices on the screen. ESPN Full Circle, Florida versus Auburn, delivered by AT&T Saturday at 7.45 Eastern time. And uh, you can catch a reeling... War Eagle team from many different perspectives and ESPN platforms because yeah. they uh, they got shocked yesterday. It'll be interesting to see how they react and as we mentioned earlier, they fell precipitously out of the top ten. No doubt. Let's kick Davis down to the 17. Britt Davis. And Britt Davis gives Northern Illinois a good starting field position on this drive. And speaking of Auburn's game yesterday against Arkansas in the first quarter. Mitch Mustaine with a 50-yard touchdown pass to Marcus Monk. 
The Razorbacks going up 10 to nothing at that point. In the second quarter, Darren McFadden with a 63-yard touchdown run to put the Hogs up 17 to seven. Now Auburn was ranked number two coming into that game. Arkansas moving up to number 17 in the rankings after the win. Full circle next week. Out of the backfield, Garrett Wolf. Bodies surrounding him. I tell you, it's as if they got one of those lo those low jack detectors in his uh, cleats or something. They can track him down wherever he goes. Well, he's always going to attract attention, and that's why the passing game for Northern Illinois is so critical. Talked about Phil Horvath and his development. He's, he's a quarterback that runs his team well at the line of scrimmage, manages the football game. But here in the fourth quarter, Mark Jones, I think he's going to have to have some success hitting his wide receivers on the outside. Second down and seven coming up for the Huskies. Garrett Wolf bouncing it to the edge. Put his hat down and put it on a couple of defenders that time to plow his way to the 43. Bostic made the stop on the play for Miami. This Miami defense has been at key points tonight uh, very intransigent. They have not given up, given up any ground. Well, and they came into this game not even ranked in the top 100 in the country defending the run. And yeah, most people turn around the game. If you don't know who Garrett Wolf is, you say they're not doing a good job, but they've done a pretty solid job against the run. Horvath. Complete out near midfield at the 48 yard line. And that's a first down. Britt Davis making the catch, working against Jeff Thompson. And Stacey Dales, what do you have? Well, the defense has been key for Miami, Mark. And we talked to Tabor Johnson, the defensive coordinator for Miami. And he told us the key, we have to stop Garrett Wolf. We've got to make him go sideline to sideline. And we've got to play with 13 guys on the field, that being the two sidelines, David and Mark. So far, I guess they've been somewhat successful in their plan. Although he is averaging almost seven yards a pop. Man open downfield, Perez. And it's going to be ruled complete at the nine. Worked against Gaines. Marcus Perez, the deep threat coming through. And Gaines got caught sleeping. Marcus Perez is a wide receiver who you have to keep on your radar screen. And he's just flat going to run by Gaines. Now Gaines is bailing out. And Horvath gets the ball on Perez in a hurry. That was a secret. He got the ball out on time and on his numbers down the field. Here's Wolf, Garrett Wolf, down to the three yard line. Man, does he run hard. Joey Card, an equally hard tackler, making the stop at second and goal. And when you see hats and mouth guards flying on the field like we saw on that play, <laughs> you know they're laying some hat on people. That's Linwood, 6'1", 300 pounds. And Garrett Wolf was bringing the helmet on that play. <laughs> We've seen a couple plays where Garrett Wolf has gone in to the thickness and really delivered some blows. Second and goal. They load up for the run, and Wolf runs right into the teeth of the defense. Joey Card came up. He's with the co-captain that defense for the Red Hawks. He's the leader back there, the hard hitter who got upended. So you know what they say about payback. He got a little bit right there on Wolf. Third and goal coming up. And Miami with a five-point lead. This is a critical play call. And I'm, I'm looking for play action here. And Garrett Wolf is such a focal point that you have to take advantage. I think we're going to see play action. A four for 12 on third down conversions. With a bootleg action, touchdown Huskies. Davis with the grab. Phil Horvath with great preparation and execution. And Brandon Davis has his second touchdown catch this season as a result. And Phil Horvath getting his troops rallied for a two point conversion deep enough into the fourth quarter where you look at the chart. I'm going to try to extend this lead to three points, but that was a pinpoint throw by Horvath and a nice route from his young tight end. Here they go for two. Wolf keeps powering those legs and got in for the two-point conversion. 
Garrett Wolf putting some muscle behind that hustle. Yeah, he just carried Joey Hudson, the middle linebacker, into the end zone. The lead changes hands once again. Horvath with pinpoint passing. And Garrett Wolf with the running. Davis with the catch. We'll be back after this. Like playing video games? Train now for a career in this $7 billion industry. That's right, IADT Chicago is now offering career training in game design and development. At IADT, you can learn how to take your game ideas from concept to completion. With over 230 million video games sold last year, game makers need talented, trained people to make the next generation of games. Call now to learn more about career training in game design and development. Call 888-826-3111. Our phone line is open right now. That's 888-826-3111. Call now. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Altel Wireless. Come and get your love. The original Husky watching in earnest. And right now, it is Northern Illinois with the lead. But a moment ago, Garrett Wolf on that touchdown run. Well, it was actually a two-point point conversion. conversion run. Was he in or not? Was he down or not? Uh, you know, you don't have indisputable evidence here, but watch the knee. Keep rolling it. Keep rolling it. Right there, his knee's clearly down. Right there, and I don't think he had the ball. I don't think he had the ball across the goal line. But from that angle, looking through Garrett Wolf's back, you know, the officials upstairs, you can't really say they have indisputable evidence to even stop the game. That, that play was not reviewed. And we can look at it one more time. Remember that uh, each team has one coach's challenge per half. Now Garrett Wolf, and you see his strength, his lower body strength, but right there, his knees down. Is he across then, at that point, though? Right? That was a very close call and an important two points, but you, know, you got to give it to the officiating crew and the guys upstairs. Not an angle where they're going to be able to take a look and have clear vision on that play. The kickoff. McVeigh stuck at the 22 yard line. Defense a little jacked up after that hit off the 16 yard kickoff return. Spencer Williamson lower the boom. Well, let's, let's take a look at what the Northern Illinois coverage team was talking about after this play. Spencer Williamson. That's getting a return man in a vulnerable position when you can get both of his legs off the ground and you drop him on the back of his helmet. First down and 10. The lead has changed hands four different times in the last several minutes. Pressure. Kokel brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 18-yard line. That's going to be a loss of about three on the play. And Corey Hansen, the outside linebacker, came free on Kokel. And again, this is a luxury of having a mobile quarterback. Watch off the edge. Corey Hansen had him dead to rights in the backfield. And while well, Kokel didn't turn it into a big play, you, know, you look to your quarterbacks to limit the loss of yardage on sacks. You don't want quarterbacks that are going to run back and give you second and 17. Kokel gives you second and 12. Made a little something out of nothing. And it off is to Bratton. Branton with a burst, and he got the first down beyond the 30-yard line, out to the 32. Andre Branton with a nice change of pace, in contrast to Brandon Murphy, a pickup of 13. He's provided a spark. His first two career touchdown runs came tonight, and that's the Miami, Ohio offense that we've seen under Ben Roethlisberger and Josh Betts. Now, Kokel has set up enough of a threat in the passing game since that rough start in the first quarter to really create problems for a run defense when they've handed off to their backs. First and 10, they hand it off again. Bratton again, cutting back against the grain. Bratton with a strong run to the 46. 14 yards of real estate and a missed tackle by Uchtick. And you don't see Dustin Uchtick miss many tackles. Really the rock of the defense for Northern Illinois. 
from the shotgun. They give you a zone read type look from the quarterback. And Andre Bratton is earning some carries down the road in this 2006 season. And Woods on as the wide out, and Bratton the tailback. Two guys that we haven't heard much from that are coming of age tonight. Play fake, Kokel. A little bit high for Ryan Robinson at the 34 yard line. Ryan Robinson, for the most part, has been relatively bottled up by the secondary. Well, this was overthrown, but still a pretty impressive attempt. Two underneath defenders, including Tim McCarthy. And if Kokel could have just led him across the field a little bit more, that would have been a big pickup. Now the Ryan Robinson, you know, they do a lot of things, Mark, to get him free. And formationing and op, you know, moving him in motion. But it uh, not had has not had the big night that we expect. Does have four catches for 38 yards, still making a contribution of sorts. This pass complete. Short of the first down at the 47 yard line to Dustin Woods who is having a career day for the Red Hots brought down by Spencer Williamson providing the coverage. Seven yard pickup and we're looking at less than five and a half minutes to go. How much uh, does the clock become a factor now for the Red Hots. Well I think it really becomes a factor because you know you want to continue to move downfield and you don't want to become too methodical but I think it makes sense to not worry about the clock and bleed clock on this drive. Ryan Robinson saw the tip but made the catch anyway. And he's brought down for a loss on the play back at midfield of the 50. It was tipped by Corey Hansen. And Ryan Robinson has made his 209th career reception most in school history with this grab. Well this is a nice job of staying with the football. Hansen coming on the blitz. And Ryan Robinson with a one handed grab. That could have been a dangerous play for Miami Ohio and it looks like they're going on fourth down here. I don't know about this call at midfield. We're still over four minutes to go. I don't like the call. Coco under heat. Let's it go. But they are stopped up short of the first down at the 47 yard line and the Huskies will take over on downs. Well, Mark Jones, I'm not sure about that call. All three timeouts over four minutes to go in the game, and you can change field position with the punt. I don't like it. Shane Montgomery will have to answer at some point. We'll be back after this. Mama's boy. It was great radio. That's all. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. Coming up on Sports Center, a wild shootout in Philly, a game winning run back in New Orleans, and a controversial finish at Talladega. Plus, why Joe Torrey should be back in the Bronx. It's Sports Center after the game. Congratulate. <laughs> Don't hate. Here's a look at the drive chart for Northern Illinois and how does this factor into the decision made by Shane Montgomery. Well I think there you know if you if you want to explanation there I think Shane Montgomery in his press conference is going to tell you we've had trouble stopping Northern Illinois offense but then again you're out near midfield there and you're giving Northern Illinois tremendous field position if you don't pick up the first down. And as I said I think it's just a little too early in the fourth quarter especially when you got three timeouts still in your hip pocket in the last five possessions Northern Illinois since the beginning of the half has scored two touchdowns had two punts and had a field goal. Garrett Wolf out to the 49 yard line he has been extremely efficient maybe not spectacular today in a Garrett Wolf sense when you talk about somebody averaging 236.4 yards per game coming in. But still when you look at the fact that he is rushed for 156 yards well he's having a good night. Well in an offensive passing game and the running game go hand in hand and even though he's not over 200 yards he's had impressive an impressive enough night that he's given them some options in the pass game and Horvath has taken advantage. Second and seven. Stopped up at the line of scrimmage at the 50 yard line. 
Miami with a full complement of timeouts remaining. They have three timeouts left. Coniglio and Hudson making the stop on the play as the clock runs with 3.06 to go. Now, and you don't use a timeout here because you still have three minutes and counting, and you're most likely going to see Northern Illinois put the ball up here. An incomplete pass is as good as a timeout. Third the key down. is to make the stop here. Third and seven. Red Hawks need a play defensively. Horvath in trouble. Into traffic and incomplete. That stops the clock with 2.34 to go. And Miami will get the ball back after this punt. Yeah, that was, that was good decision making by Shane Montgomery and his staff. You know on third and seven, third and eight, you're going to get a pass attempt. And there's a good shot. If you play defense soundly, you're going to get an incomplete. And Miami saves all three timeouts. Ryan Robinson would love an opportunity, just a chance to get his hands on this punt. Uh, there's no way you leave <laughs> this in the field of play, especially from this field position at midfield. Dick Benner aims for the coffin corner. And this one bounces out of bounds before the 20 yard line. It's going to be marked at the 23. So with two timeouts remaining, Miami has the ball after the 27 yard punt. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie and Stacy Dales. It's homecoming weekend here in Oxford, Ohio. Miami University taking on Northern Illinois. Miami has not won a game all season, but they're down just 0-1 in conference play. This is the go-ahead touchdown pass and catch. Horvath to Davis, and this is Robinson on the catch and the first down at the 37-yard line. That was a big stop by the Red Hawks defense. A three and out. And Miami really needed it. And now it's up to Kokel. And with 2.18 to go here, you have plenty of time, three timeouts. Don't try to grab too much on one throw. If you keep the chains moving, you got a good chance to either tie this football game with a field goal or win it with a touchdown. Out of the shotgun poke this time. And he's sacked back at the 27 by Larry English. Arguably their best pass rusher up front. And Kokel was shaken up on the hit. And Kokel, that is the cardinal error on a clock drive with the game on the line. You can't take a sack. And I think Kokel was relying on his mobility to make Larry English miss. English would have not, would have none of it. That was a that was a heck of a play to, for English to get in and make the tackle and corral Kokel. Not a good sign for a quarterback that has taken way too many hits this year. His offensive line has allowed more sacks than any team in the country coming into this game. And there's a look at Daniel Radabaugh, who was forced into action at the last minute last week against Cincinnati. He found out just two hours before the start of the game that he would be the starting quarterback because this man right here, Mike Kokel, was suffering from severe headaches, headaches that had begun earlier in the week, as early as Tuesday of that game week. And Radabaugh looked well in that game against Cincinnati. He went 21 of 47 for 190 yards. And, you know, three points offensively for Miami. You, know, you take the Ryan Robinson return away. And Radabaugh, you don't want to see him in this situation with the game on the line. Kokel's going to stay in, but that was a big sack. A second and 18. You can't take a loss like that on the clock drive with the game on the line. On the out pattern complete to Robinson. Robinson is pushed out of bounds at the 37, short of the first down by about nine yards. Melvin Rice with the coverage for Northern Illinois. Two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And remember that if it comes down to a game tying potential field goal, that the snapper and the holder, the regular first string guys, are shaken up. Well, that was a nice comeback play there by Kokel to have the discipline to come underneath. And how about Ryan Robinson stepping out of tackles and getting the ball out of bounds? 
Third and nine, blitz coming. Coco hangs in there, going up top. And incomplete intended for Ryan Robinson. Dustin Uchtick back there stride for stride with the speedy Robinson. And yep. it's fourth and nine. That is rolling the dice when you make a, a low percentage throw on third down and eight. And if you do make that low percentage throw, Mark Jones, keep the ball in bounds. Uh, Give Robinson an opportunity to make a play. Game on the line here. No by mere inches. And that might be the game with 149 to go. Woods had gotten in behind the defender. Well, and Kokel's going to learn. He's learning a lot of lessons tonight. He's been impressive at times. He's made a lot of solid throws down the field. But Woods gets behind Williamson. And on fourth down, you want to keep the ball in play. Now, Woods is a sub-4-4 four, four guy. Give him a shot at least to make a play. And Kokel just missed him by about a full step. This game is not over. You know, it, Miami is hurt here by the fact that the clock stops on a change of possession, but if you stop Northern Illinois, you'll get the ball back. They hand it off to Garrett Wolf. Running between the tackles down to the 31-yard line, and Garrett Wolf maybe earning himself a few more Heisman votes tonight. Still the nation's leading rusher. Well, Might not get to 200 yards tonight, but still an impressive total of 159 with the meter still running. Well, Miami uses their second timeout, one timeout left, and you look at the clock, you do the math. The second down coming up. Miami has one timeout for the second down play. They will not have a timeout for the third down play. So you do the mathematics here, and if Miami can get a stop on downs, they'll get the ball with somewhere in the in the neighborhood of 40 seconds left in the game. In 40 seconds, you always in college football have a shot to move huh. the ball down for a field goal try. I look into Kokel's eyes, and boy, if there's a pass that he wishes he could have back, it would be that last one that was intended for Dustin Woods. He waited four years. He's been in the program for four years. Backed up Josh Betts. Uh, was under Roethlisberger for a season as well. And this year he won a very fierce three-way competition for the starting job. So far, winless. High expectations. You come in, you play behind Betts and Roethlisberger. And you know, a lot comes with the position at Miami, Ohio. They hand it off to Wolf. And he's met immediately. He'll lose a couple of the yards back to the 34 with 118 to go. Hudson leading the way for the defense. And Miami burns a timeout as we look at the upcoming schedule for Northern Illinois. And the one that really looms large in terms of Heisman hopes for Garrett Wolf is the game at Iowa. Well, that's. That that's where you'll get the voters to tuning in and if he were able to have if he was able to have a big game at Iowa that would put him on the map with even more voters and look at Eastern Michigan against the run 108th in the nation Temple 117th and Toledo 93rd a league opponent. My partner, wouldn't you think to, to actually have a shot to win the Heisman Trophy, I think he's got to have a big day at Iowa, and he's got to break Barry Sanders' single-season record. I think he's got to yeah. reach those and two so, milestones to, to really have a good shot. I think another thing that would help, at least in the case of the voters subconsciously, is if Northern Illinois as a team enjoyed the success of perhaps a conference championship or even winning the division. It always helps to say that he did that in the context of a winning formula. And not right now, looking at third down and seven. Big play here. Miami needs a stop. Horvath. The pass is going to be complete, but the spot appears to be short of the first down by about a foot. Britt Davis made the catch with 1.12 to go and fourth down coming up. Well, and, and it looked initially like Britt Davis had possession of this football at the first down markers, but he makes a move back upfield and actually goes out of bounds on his own accord. And the officials were right on top of it. And Miami has been able to not have to use that 
or they don't have a timeout left, but they haven't needed that extra timeout as a result of him going out of bounds. Fourth down. And this might be reviewed here. Up. I think they're going to Time review out. the spot. Northern Illinois, that's our first charge, team timeout. Nice use of the timeouts by Shane Montgomery. And you know, he only had two timeouts for the three downs, but he didn't need to use that missing timeout because he got an out of bounds play. Miami uh, now out of timeout. Northern Illinois with two remaining. And don't forget, coming up, Sports Center right after the game. T.O. and Donovan McNabb uh, have their showdown in Philadelphia as the Eagles win it. A controversial win at Talladega and uh, arguments as to why Joe Torre should return to the Yankees. They're reviewing the spot of the ball here. Well, and I, I think he went out of bounds by his own accord, Britt Davis. And the way he fell out of bounds, he was moving backwards. That was not Wewo that caused him. Actually, it's Jared Gaines. That was not Gaines that made the hit and forced him out of bounds. I think the officials got that right. And most importantly here, if you're on your offensive player for Miami, Ohio, you're getting ready because that clock is going to wind. If you get a stop here on fourth down, you've got to have a play called. You've got to have a formation ready. And you go out and you get over the ball there with more than a minute to go in the game. Plenty of time for Miami if they can get a stop here. They're reviewing the play. Now this is going to be fourth down. If the contact forced gains from in front of the chains and out of bounds, not only would that be a first down, but they would have wound the clock and the, and the game clock would be moving right now. So Novak's team uh, looking to improve to three and one in the Western Division. And Miami looking for its first win of the season under head coach Shane Montgomery. A lot Britt, of that riding on this review. Well, and Britt Davis did a nice job here. I mean, this is an important play. You've got to come back to the football. And as he comes back, his momentum leads him back upfield and away from the first down chains. And Gaines just gets a hand in late. But that wasn't Gaines that forced him out of bounds. Let's see where the official steps. Huh. I mean, they may change the spot by a half yard, but that certainly should not be a first down. And I think we're going to see a fourth down here with the game on the line. Here's the call. The video review confirms the call on the field is correct. Fourth down. 112 to go. Has a double-edged sword. On one hand, you give up a, a pass completion close to a first down, but on the other side, of the sword, Shane Montgomery, Shane Montgomery and his team got a big break there, and the clock stopped. I think we're going to see Mr. Wolf here. Yes, partner. Two tight end formation, two wide outs, and a single back set. That single back, Garrett Wolf, and Northern Illinois calls a timeout. They've got one left now. When it comes to clock management, yesterday a very controversial ending in the USC Washington game, so you would think that the clock will have to be managed. Here's how it went down. With time winding down, 11 seconds left. Stand back hits Sonny Shackelford, and we go back to the action on fourth down. Horvath. Trying to draw him offside on fourth and short, and they may use a timeout here. Northern Illinois trying to pick up the first down without snapping the football. And I think it was a smart play and a smart call by Joe Novak. Let's show you how important clock management can be. Back to yesterday's game. Washington down by six. Steinbeck hits Shackelford. To the USC 15. The clock goes down to two seconds and is stopped for the refs to reset the ball. 
Pete Carroll going crazy on the sidelines because the refs, he says, took too long to reset it and let it wind. Washington can't get their act together despite the time the officials had given them. And it's whistle dead. They didn't even get an attempt on. Well, let me break that down for you. The, the receiver was down with six seconds on the clock. And I, I wasn't at the Coliseum yesterday. Let's take another look at that. Can we take another look at that real quickly here? You take you take a look at it one more time, and the receiver goes to a knee with six seconds. And if the officials are working correctly with the timekeeper at the Coliseum, he's down right there. Look at the time on the clock, six seconds. So at worst, my you know, Washington should have had five seconds on the clock for that last play. Here we go on fourth and one. Horvath keeps it on a quick count. And it looks like he got the first down. And if he does, that would end the hopes of the Red Hawks. I'm not sure they gave him the best spot, at least as far as Joe Novak is concerned, head coach for Northern Illinois. Horvath, a pretty good guy, a pretty big guy. at 6'3", 197. Now, this is going to be a close mark. This could go either way. Neither team with a timeout remaining. This is going to be extremely close. And this is a this is a play, Mark Jones, where I think you might see a challenge from Joe Novak if they're short on a quarterback sneak. First down, made it through the maze of legs. Phil Horvath. With a quarterback sneak on fourth and short. Never a dull moment. <laughs> uh, this Gets is it himself. This is a spot where Shane Montgomery could issue a challenge. And you know, I think you pull out all the stops here. And you don't want to go into the locker room with that flag in your back pocket. And on the other hand, I don't think the odds are very strong. You get the call reversed. Well, as long as it's not a white flag of surrender for Miami, they will fall to 0 and 6 on the season and 0 and 2 in league play. Joe Novak uh, protesting something on the sidelines. His team looking at 3 and 1 in the West Division of the Mid American Conference as they wind up a three game road trip next week against Western Michigan, one of the stronger teams in the conference. And this will be the third win in a row for Northern Illinois. And for Garrett Wolf, 29 rushes, 162 yards. Heisman Trophy material, certainly. A long road to go, certainly. A lot to be decided for Garrett Wolf individually and Northern Illinois as a team. But they take this one, the final score, 28 to 25 on homecoming weekend here in Oxford, Ohio. The lead changed hands several times in the last quarter and a half. But in the end, the Huskies hung on to win it. A crucial and pivotal play, the quarterback sneak by Phil Horvath on fourth and short. Horvath put some very good numbers up on the board once again, 15 to 25 passing. 186 yards, one touchdown pass, and as I mentioned, Garrett Wolf, 162 yards added to his total. And it's a combination of Horvath and the passing offense with Wolf that's going to make things very tough for defenses to stop Northern Illinois the rest of the way. Let's go downstairs to Stacy. Mark, I'm joined with Garrett Wolf. And Garrett, you found your rhythm in the second quarter. What was the key to that rhythm? Uh, I think it just all starts up front. Uh, the offensive line always does a great job. And, you know, it's kind of hard to run the ball when they're bringing nine guys down to the line of scrimmage. But the offensive line did what they were supposed to do, and we were able to get things rolling. You're consistently seeing nine guys all the time, double coverage, triple coverage. How do you manage to average over 200 yards every game? Uh, it's great play calling. Uh, also, the tight ends and wide receivers do an unbelievable job of blocking on the perimeter. I've just been a very fortunate young man, and I can't take credit for all this. They do a great job helping me out. There's a lot of talk about the Heisman Trophy. What do you think about all the talk? Uh, I think it's great for the university. It's not something that I'm really focused on. Uh, it'd be great. I'd be lying if I said it wouldn't be great to go to New York and win the Heisman, but that's not a concern of mine. The concern of mine is winning football games and winning the MAC championship. Congratulations.
Congratulations, Garrett. Mark, we'll go back up to you. You see the steam coming off of his head. Proof that Garrett Wolf indeed is on fire as a running back. The final score once again, 28 to 25 for Northern Illinois. For David Norrie and Stacey Dales, I'm Mark Jones saying so long. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Right now we join Neil Everett and Stan Barrett for SportsCenter.